the hearing uh, will please come to order. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This meeting is hereby called to order. I would like to acknowledge the presence of wala uh, akong kasama dito. Pero mamaya, coming na sila. Isahintay lang natin. Yung other members of the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to acknowledge the, the kind presence of uh, our uh, majority floor leader to provide us a quorum. So with the, with the presence of the majority leader, we declare a quorum. For today's hearing, there are seven bills under consideration. For orderly procedure, we have clustered the bills according to topics. And these are part one, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency bills. We have one, Senate, Senate Bill number three, an act amending Article 11 of Republic Act 9165, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002, and creating the Presidential Drug Enforcement Authority, and for other purposes by Senator Vicente Soto III. Siguro nabasa na nyo ito, I hope. Number two, Senate Bill Number 462, an act expanding the jurisdiction of the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, defining the prosecutorial powers provided thereto, and amending for purposes of Republic Act Number 9165, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002, as amended by Senator Ramon Bong Rebilla, Jr. Thank you, sir. Majority floor leader. For part two, we have uh, the drug rehabilitation center bills. We have the Senate Bill number 399, an act providing for the establishment and support of a drug abuse treatment and rehabilitation center in every province throughout the Philippines and appropriating funds thereof by Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo. Number four, Senate Bill Number 464, an act establishing a drug treatment rehabilitation center in the city of Bacoor Province of Cavite, to be known as the City of Bacoor Drug Treatment and Rehabilitation Center and appropriating funds thereof by Senator Ramon Bong Rebilla, Jr. Number five, Senate Bill Number 513, an act strengthening the drug abuse prevention, treatment, and rehabilitation, amending for the purpose Republic Act Number 9165, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002, as amended and appropriating funds thereof, authored by yours truly. Number six, Senate Bill Number 658 an act creating a rehabilitation center for juvenile rugby users, providing for penalties and appropriating funds therefore by Senator Ramon Bong Rebilla Jr. <clears throat> and the last is Senate, Senate Bill Number 749, an act strengthening the drug rehabilitation programs of the government, amending for this purpose Republic Act Number 9165, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002, as amended, appropriating funds thereof and for other purposes by Senator Grace Poe. <clears throat> At this point, why I please request the committee secretary to recognize the guests and resource persons in today's hearing. Thank you, sir. Uh, we will be recognizing the following guests uh, according to my list. Uh, from the Department of Finance, Attorney Francis Justin Rigor. From the Department of Justice, Attorney Rosario Elena Cuevas. 
from the Department of Social Welfare and Development, Mr. Joshua Matipo. From the Department of Labor, uh, Officer in Charge, Asek Philip Paredes. From the Department of Health, uh, Dr. Jose Bienvenido Yabres. From the uh, PDEA, Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, ASEC Gregorio Arcimentel. From the Dangerous Drugs Board, uh, USEC Benjamin Reyes. From the Philippine National Police, uh, Police Brigadier General Romeo De Castro. Uh, Police Brigadier General Elmer Cabrero. Uh, Police Lieutenant Colonel Enrico Rigor. And from the Armed Forces of the uh, from the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Colonel Julius Agdepa. From the National Bureau of Investigation, Attorney Ross Jonathan Galicia. Attorney Eduardo F. Ramos. From the Bureau of Customs, uh, Mr. Ernesto Pacale. And uh, Mr. Ian Barros. Good morning to all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Comsec. And uh, let me proceed with my opening statement. <clears throat> Short-term thinking is the greatest enemy of good government, as stated by a famous Australian politician, Honorable Anthony Albanese. It is of common knowledge that the war against drugs has been President Rodrigo Duterte's advocacy not only upon his assumption in office in 2016, but even prior to his announcement of his candidacy. Following his election, the president continued to advocate his anti-drugs campaign, which, so to speak, resulted both in the massive influx of drug users surrendering to law enforcement authorities. Realizing the negative implications of illegal drugs, hindi lamang sa kanilang personal na buhay, ngunit pati na sa kabuoan ng komunidad, as well as a huge number of those <coughs> persons apprehended and arrested for violation of Republic Act Number no. 9165, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. While the President's call on war on drugs has cl clearly been successful, considering the thousands of drug dependents surrendering, the lack of rehabilitation centers in our country became clearly apparent, which we consider as a happy problem. Pero tulad ng ibang problema, positibo man o negatibo, ito ay dapat solusyonan. Hindi natatapos ang obligasyon natin sa pagbabawas ng drug users, posers, at drug lords sa ating bansa. Dapat nating tugunan kung ano ang dapat gawin, lalong-lalo na sa mga drug users na kusang loob na sumusuko sa pagnanais na muling maibalik sa normal ang kanilang buhay na minsan nang sinira ng illegal na droga. It bears tracing that the Philippine justice system is restorative in nature, which advocates reintegration of the offenders to the social mainstream on one hand, and recognizing the proactive involvement of the community to support and assist the rehabilitation of victim and offenders. <clears throat> I cannot overemphasize, therefore, the importance of rehabilitation centers as instruments of treatment and recovery of drug dependence and as vital means to lead them back of normal and healthy lives. It is unfortunate, however, that the Mega Drug Abuse Treatment and Rehabilitation Center in Nueva Ecija, which has a capacity of 2,500 beds, is not fully utilized as there are only a few drug users who voluntarily submitted themselves to rehabilitation. Thank you. 
In fact, as per last latest data of the Philippine National Police, out of the 1.28 million who surrendered in 2016, only 462,610 or 36.04% voluntarily submitted themselves to rehabilitation. Furthermore, out of 41,583 cases filed in 2018, only 13,111 have resulted in the conviction of drug suspects. Some cases have resulted in either the acquittal of the accused or dismissal due to technicalities, among others. All this frustrates not only the ends of justice, but likewise disregard the indefatigable efforts of our law enforcement officers who put their lives at stake in implementing the law. Ang tanong ngayon, sapat ba ang pasilidad ng ating gobyerno upang tugunan ang sinasabi nating happy problem? Sapat ba ang ating mga batas para matugunan ang malalang problema sa droga? This committee hearings aims to scrutinize the efficiency of our present laws and to, fulfill, and to fill in the legislative gaps that would respond to the needs of our society. Hence, I look forward to our scholarly and practical discussions on the bills under consideration so that in the end, we shall come up with legislative measures that would bring hope to our people amidst the challenges of the uh, of drug minis. Maraming salamat. Magandang umaga muli sa ating lahat. Anybody would like to deliver his uh, own um, opening statement also? Kung merong gusto magsalita? Otherwise, we proceed to tackling the bills already. Okay? Para maging matiwasay ang ating pagdinig sa araw na ito, sundin natin ang pagkasunod-sunod ng mga topics ng bills for discussion. Part 1, ito yung PDA bills. Dalawa dito, SB number 3, Senate President Tito Soto, and SB 462 by Senator Rebilla. Dito sa... Itong uh, Senate Bill number 3, Creation of Presidential Drug Enforcement Authority. Ito lang sa little pictures, basahin ko sa inyo. Number 1, uh, the objective is the uh, creation of the Presidential Drug Enforcement Authority which shall primarily be the supervising agency for the implementation of RA-9165. Primary function, the Presidential Drug Enforcement Authority shall absorb the policy-making and strategy-formulating functions of the current Dangerous Drugs Board and shall dissolve both the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency and the DDB. So, apiktado yung dalawang ahinsya dito. Dissolution of PDEA functions. The existing powers of functions of PDEA on anti-drug enforcement be exercised by the Philippine National Police, National Bureau of Investigation, Bureau of Customs, and Armed Forces of the Philippines, respective narcotics units, while the original units thereof shall be absorbed by the Presidential Drug Enforcement Authority. Huh? Okay. So, siguro nabasa ninyo, uh, any thoughts on this? Lalo lalo yung mga magiging uh, affected agency. The Jerus Dogs Board and PDA. Oh, you, DDP, uh, Yusek Benjamin Reyes is uh, Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. recognized. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chair. As this bill was uh, discussed in the previous uh, uh, committee hearings, uh, we, we present the same uh, position, Mr. Chair, 
uh, the proposed bill from uh, the good Senate President is most welcome and ideal. However, since the board is a collegial body, it has noted concerns of agency members which were also expressed in the previous committee hearing, Chair. With the popularity of the drug campaign at its all-time high, despite the many issues, gaps still left un unplugged, it is not an overstatement to say that the Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy endorsed by the President under EO 66 is moving towards a positive direction. It is important, therefore, to sustain the momentum and strengthen institutional implementation of the respective mandates of the member uh, agencies of the board, Mr. Chair. Current interagency cooperation exemplifying a whole-of-government approach is at an all-time high. Maybe it's more prudent at this time to support and strengthen implementation of each member agency and sustain status quo. But again, uh, Mr. Chair, the proposal is a definite solution, is a definitive solution, especially if logistics and allocation will support the initiative. In the end, uh, Mr. Chair, we submit to the wisdom of the Senate. Thank you, Yusik uh, Benjamin Reyes. Uh, Asik Pimentel is recognized. And then, masiguro kayo maging jobless dito, di ba? You will be absorbed by the Presidential uh, Drug Enforcement uh, Authority. Yung personnel ng DDB at ng PDA. Please, uh, go ahead, sir. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. I am uh, Asik uh, Gregorio Pimentel, your uh, subordinate when you were the chief PNP and now assigned in PDA. Good morning to everyone. Please allow me to present the position of PDEA with regards to the introduction of Senate Bill Number 3, amending Article 18 of Republic Act 9165, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Dangerous Drug Act of 2002, and creating the Presidential Drug Enforcement Authority and for other purposes. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency will always be indebted to the Senate of the Philippines. The overwhelming support we receive from you is beyond any expression of gratitude. You have been there expressing your strongest support to the PIDEA since its creation in 2002. Your furthest inquiries, investigations, and legislations have all strengthened and intensified our resolve to end the menace of dangerous drugs which by far has infected all sectors of our society. We are not unaware of the noble intent behind the introduction of Senate Bill Number 3, which, as the good author puts, is the further strengthening our fight against illegal drugs by unifying the four major programs, enforcement, prosecution, prevention, and rehabilitation, into a single agency. To recall, however, this was the same intent that led to the creation of PIDEA way back 17 years ago. PIDEA was created in 2002 as lead agency in the war against dangerous drugs to cure the gaps or problems in the enforcement of drug laws. These gaps or problems pertains to the absence of a formal mechanism for information exchange coordination in the conduct of joint investigation among agencies, duplication, and overlapping efforts, organizational rivalries, scattered anti-drug efforts, absence of a unified enforcement strategy, and weak stance on anti-drug campaign, a same is dependent on the priority of an agency's head. It follows that the abolition of PIDEA would mean nothing less than abandoning the same intent. Hence, we are compelled to voice our strong opposition to the bill. We deeply feel that its passage would cause more harm rather than solution to the current anti-drug war of the government. This war has not been fought overnight, but for more than a decade already. 
precious lives and time have already been sacrificed to an unimaginable extent. At this point, please consider our views as follows. The government's anti-drug program and strategies are already in place. The abolition of PDEA and DDB, along with their powers and authority, were certainly displaced and compromised these strategies, supply reduction, demand reduction, and harm reduction. This already exists several, there already exist several mechanisms unifying the four major programs the enforcement, prosecution, prevention, and rehabilitation, which the bill seeks to address. Already in place and operational are the Interagency Committee on Anti-Illegal Drugs Joint Task Forces, the NAIA Interagency Drug Interdiction Task Groups, and various memoranda of agreement and arrangements with the concerned government agencies and local government units. Over the years, PIDEA has likewise forged strong ties and productive agreement with various international bodies and agencies to combat the illegal trafficking of dangerous, dangerous drugs. The current anti-drug campaign has already gained the necessary momentum to curtail the proliferation of dangerous drugs. A reorganization may only harm and place every effort to achieve this momentum back to scratch. The current setup is effectively functioning, the DDB as a policy-making body and PIDEA as its implementing arm, already in sync with the performance of their respective functions. Abolishing the enforcement power of PIDEA and relegating it to other law enforcement agency will just derail the government's momentum in its supply reduction efforts. It is noteworthy that the 2018 Aside from the numerous high-value targets arrested and high-impact operations conducted, a triumvirate composed of high-ranking officials from PDEA, PNP, and DOC suspected to be involved in the shipment of huge quantities of shabu was uncovered and appropriate charges filed in court. Likewise, early this 2019, the PDEA was able to seize a total of 776 kilos of shabu, which surpassed the, the combined seizure of 672 kilos of shabu from the first quarter of 2019 to 2018. The creation of the Presidential Drug Enforcement Authority, or PRDEA, in view of PDEA and DDV does not give any assurance that the war on drugs will greatly improve. It may be in the process instead. Stall the progress already gained in the anti-illegal drug campaign since PDEA's creation in 2002. As provided in the bill, PDEA, which will only be reduced as a mere bureau of PRDEA in limited to monitoring and assessing the enforcement of RA 9165 by the other law enforcement agencies. The passage of the bill may compromise the security of tenure of the personnel and employees of PIDEA, leaving them orphans and on low morale to continue with their mandate. The PIDEA employees' qualifications at the time of their admission to PIDEA may not anymore be fit or compliant with, with the requirements and related policies to the other law enforcement agencies. Well, the bill has provisions to the transfer, absorption, and integration of all operating units to other law enforcement agencies, the availability of plantilla positions to the later may also be very restricted or limited to accommodate appointments for similar positions, ranks, salary, grades. The proposed structure of PRDEA may create, discard, rather than unify between the concerned departments of agencies of government. The supervisory power of PRDEA may overlap or encroach with those pertaining to the principal department of other law enforcement agencies, requiring other law enforcement agencies to submit monthly reports 
on the status of cases and programs pertaining to RA-9165 can be done by the current DDB and PDEA. It will not necessitate major amendments in the law. Pwede pa ituloy ko? Okay. Medyo isang page na lang. The act is That's why you are here. here. That's why you are here because you want to listen from you. So please continue. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. The active advocacy of PIDEA to end the menace of dangerous drugs under the guide of its core values, professionalism, dynamic, excellence drive, and accountable, and its mandate under the 9165 has already been institutionalized. PIDEA is actively working with several local government units including the various barangays and government and private institutions or facilities as airports, seaports, public transportation, terminal schools, and more. The bill failed as well to contemplate on what would be its repercussions to the requirement of Section 21 of RA 9165 as amended by RA 10640. More specifically, on the custody and disposition of confiscated drugs. There is no provision as well on the aspect of regulatory compliance issues of licenses, regulator inspections, etc. The entire E of the bill is silent on what it happens to PDEA's current laboratory service and the dangerous drugs in its custody and PDEA's intelligence service and the intelligence information in its skips. The creation of PIDEA provides a check and balance to the existing anti-drug units to the other law enforcement agencies. The reduction of PIDEA as a mere bureau with only a supervisory function would risk the lives of its drug enforcement officers who will continually attend drug cases in courts. They may not anymore be authorized to bring service firearms should they be not be absorbed by the other law enforcement agencies. Moreover, the drug enforcement officers of the PIDEA have already undergone rigorous training and seminars on drug law enforcement. The government had already spent millions of pesos to equip them with, with this training and seminars and as well their logistical requirements. Instead of abolishing PIDEA and stripping it of law enforcement function, it may be more up to modernize it with the state-of-the-art equipment and devices, improve its employees, welfare by the passage of pertinent Magna Carta, confer it with prosecutorial power over drug cases, and strengthen its authority to go after organized drug syndicates through various legislations which may pertain to amendments of the Anti-Wire Tapping Act, Bank Secrecy Law, and RA 9165. The budgetary requirements of PIDEA may also be improved for the accommodation of additional manpower in the field of investigation, operation, and prosecution and the establishment of more satellite offices. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency is very hopeful that the foregoing enumerations will be considered in the deliberation of Senate Bill Number 3. That's all, Mr. Chair, and good morning. Thank you, Asik Pimentel. So it is very clear uh, your position on DDB is ipapapaubaya mo na lang sa Senado kung ano mangyayari dito. You, uh, you, you don't pose any objection, di ba? Uh, Mr. Chen, uh, although our position is not as strongly worded as uh, PIDEA's, <laughs> uh, we agree that uh, maybe sustaining current status quo would be more prudent. Okay, thank you. Uh, at least you make it clear. Hinihintay mo lang na babalot yung PIDEA bago ka, bago ka mag uh, hard stand. Huh? Hard stands. Anyway, so by the way, before I forget, uh, Asik Pimentel, please uh, convey my uh, gratitude to to Director General uh, Aquino, uh, Yusik Aquino. 
yung I, I, I watched in one of his interviews lately na binawi na yung term niya na rampant. Yun lang naman ako nag-react nung last uh, budgeting nung sinabi niya na hanggang ngayon rampant pa rin daw. It, it really broke the hearts of uh, a lot of uh, uh, PNP anti-drug operatives. Kasi nga, sa, kung sabihin ng isang uh, PDA director na rampant pa rin hanggang ngayon, despite sa kanilang efforts, sinabi niya, binawi niya na rampant noon. Ngayon daw, hindi na kasing rampant. Nasabi lang ngayon dahil nasa isip na yung, yung drug queen. But anyway, please tell him thank you for uh, that uh, comment. At uh, medyo nabawi-bawi na yung uh, lumural ng mga police uh, anti-drug operatives. Medyo okay-okay na. You want to say something, sir? Uh, makakarating po, Mr. Chair, and thank you for giving me the time to explain in much more detail. That's it, Mr. Chair. Okay, sir. Ito lang, uh, I just want to, yung intention ni Senator Soto dito siguro, uh, sa nabasa ko dito, is uh, gusto niya yung with the magnanimity, or with, the, with the gravity, of the uh, drug situation, gusto siguro niya yung ma-realize yung whole of government approach dito sa kanyang bill. If, kung makita ninyo, meron siyang <coughs> pinipropose dito na makikreate na under this uh, authority yung uh, uh, limang bureau, anti-drug prosecution bureau na mag-supervise sa uh, DOJ Pagdating sa prosecution, ang una pala, itong isa pa, yung Anti-Drug Enforcement Bureau na mag-supervise sa PNP, NBI, AFP, BOC. Pangalawa, Anti-Drug Prosecution Bureau mag-supervise sa DOJ. Nang pangatlo, Anti-Drug Prevention Bureau na mag-supervise sa CHED, sa DepEd, sa TESDA, about the uh, ito sa drug prevention, sa so, uh, demand reduction efforts. Ito naman, pang-apat, Anti-Drug Rehabilitation Bureau, mag-supervise sa DOH sa rehabilitation programs. At pang-lima, Anti-Drug Policy Formulation Guidelines and Procedures Bureau na shall have the power and duties that did of the DDB, DDB as provided under Section 81. Yung mga policy guidelines natin sa ating uh, uh, anti-drug campaign. Siguro, kung ma-dissolve ang DDB, pwede kayong i-absorb dito. Ito, sir, itong uh, kung ano ito, na pang-limang bureau. Yun namang pwede ka, pag ma-dissolve, you may be absorbed by, pili lang kayo, gusto nyo mag-police, gusto nyo na mag-armed uh, forces, army, military, or gusto ninyong mag uh, NBI gusto niya mag custom siguro i-distribute yung pdia doon sa mga agencies na ito at sila yung magiging core group ng uh, narcotics unit ng mga mga ahensya na ito yung, yung kaya uh, in order to dispel the apprehensions yung sinabi mo kay na sir na takot kayo magahat mag-attend ng hearing itong inyong mga operatives na na-dissolve na, baka hindi na pwede magdala ng baril dahil hindi na sila law enforcement, dito na lang sila sa uh, policy level. Yung nga, sol maging solusyon nun, i-absorb kayo ng EAP, pili kayo, police, uh, kus uh, custom or MBI, para siyo tuloy-tuloy yung trabaho ninyo, hindi ma-disrupt, hindi ma masira. Actually, you will be greatly needed by these agencies to form the core group of their uh, uh, anti-narcotics unit. Ito lang nakikita ko ha, sa envision uh, as how it is being envisioned by the Senate President. And uh, kayo sa police, okay lang sa inyo. Wala mga reklamo, di ba? Huwag matuloy ito. Ah, okay lang kayo. Army, IFP. 
Anong masasabi niyo? O okay? Not okay? We have not ma speak much about it, Your Honor, but uh, because uh, the AFP will always support whoever is the lead agency in uh, drug wars, Your Honor. We know that Pipidea does not have a boat with our long coastlines, so they need also the support of the Philippine Navy. And uh, well, but this time, you are no longer support you it. You will be one of the lead units as provided uh, in this law. Uh, lead units na kayo, along with PNP, siguro, ang magiging kwan lang dyan ngayon, paano ang deployment ninyo, yung division of labor, halimbawa, army pictures doon sa mga heavily invested areas, sila mag-perform ng anti-drug uh, operations doon. Ang PNP dito sa urban area, ang Coast Guard, ang... Uh, eh, Navy, doon sa may mga dagat, o whatever, depende rin, pero magiging lead unit na kayo dito. Along with the NBI and customs, gano'n ang magiging role nyo dito. Hindi lang support, magiging lead na talaga kayo. Uh, uh, Your Honor, uh, the trust of the Armed Forces of the Philippines is going towards more on external defense. Uh, we think that we are winning on internal insurgency and uh, we might have the timeline at the end of the president that uh, it will uh, be negligible already so we will concentrate on external defense and improving our cap capability and competency and external defense but uh, nevertheless we will uh, provide support always to any of the law enforcement agency especially the PDEA since uh, as of this moment, they are still, we consider it under infancy, that they do not have much of the capability, the equipment in combating uh, drugs, especially that they don't have a capability in, at the sea to intercept drugs at sea. Okay, I, I get your point, but uh, still, nandun pa rin sa mandate ninyo, sa pinakadolo, as the president may direct, <laughs> he will be directed by, by virtue of this law. Gagawa talaga kayo ng uh, anti-drug unit ninyo. Uh, uh, malagi, Your Honor, because oh. uh, in my experience, uh, I've uh, spent so much of my time uh, a member of the task forces in uh, uh, anti-illegal drugs. Thank you, thank you. Uh, how about NBI? Any comment from NBI? Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, the NBI uh, submits to the wisdom of this uh, honorable committee, and we stand ready to share our uh, um, all the resources of the NBI to aid this honorable committee in crafting the much-needed measures to address the drug problem of the country, uh, taking into consideration the success, the current success or progress of the war on drugs the established mechanisms to that pave the way for the success and all the resources that are being utilized right now by the government. Thank you. Uh, how about Bureau of Customs? Good morning, sir. Uh, Ernie Sakalipo of uh, Customs and Tech Legal Drugs Task Force. Uh, sir, the Bureau of Customs has no objection of this uh, 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 Senate Bill Number Three. Uh, so the, the practice of uh, PDEA and Bureau of Customs is already in place. So we already have a memorandum of agreement uh, for the operations of anti-drugs uh, operations. Uh, okay, thank you. Yung uh, ito sa tanong ko yung DDB at saka PDEA. Uh, are there any programs or DDB and PDEA currently addressing the mandates of the five proposed bureaus? Yung binagit ko kayo na. Sige, sir. Uh, for the information of the Honorable Chairman and the all people present and those who are listening in this uh, hearing, there is an uh, executive order number 15 
uh, creating the uh, interagency uh, interagency on uh, intercommittee on uh, I, I we call it ICAD interagency committee on anti uh, illegal drugs and this empowers uh, four clusters clusters on law enforcement, clusters on uh, judiciary and prosecution, clusters on the advocacy, and clusters also on the uh, rehabilitation and treatment. So all the bureaus that were mentioned a while ago are already in place and working. And this same composition is already present under the uh, umbrella of PIDEA and DDB. And uh, we are proud to say that we are gaining grounds on this. So what we lack here is we need to harness them and fund them and oper operational them much better. Ang kulang lang dito is the uh, task force component. Uh, the president assigned a task force commander, however, it was never operationalized and never funded. Ito yung task force ni Big Danau. So, ang kulang na lang dito to make all these agencies work together is to operationalize that task force. But the monitoring, management, and everything is already covered under the ICAD framework for information of the Honorable Chair. Thank you. Yes, sir. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yung creation itong interagency task force na ito is already an answer to the whole of government approach. Diba? <coughs> Ang problema lang, hindi lang nalagyan ng point man doon sa taas na mag-direct nitong lahat. So, nawala yun ni Dapansin. So, kung i-elevate natin yung PDA director to that position, baka mas maganda. Uh, actually, Mr. Chair, uh, the ICAD Mother ICAD, ang tawag doon. So the PDEA is uh, on top of it. And then there is the subclusters. There are subcluster heads that are regularly uh, sitting together and discussing matters over their own clusters. Ganun po, Mr. Chair. And then uh, we ran the report to the President on what is happening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. How about... Uh, And ito bang this W day, um Dolly, this W day, please can we hear from you? Kasama ba kayo sa ICAD, yung interagency task force on anti-drugs? Okay. Ang so far po under formulation po yung amin position paper pero nagbigay na po ng comments ang amin legal service regarding the bill na it find it no legal impediment to this bill. However, uh, it deem it necessary to clarify what extent of the supervision by the new bureau over the DSWD would be and its impact on our social protection mandate. So, yun po muna yung ano namin. Yun po muna yung masasabi muna namin. But our official position paper will be submitted after. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may add, um, under the uh, policy formulation uh, framework of the Dangerous Drugs Board, we likewise created several committees, Mr. Chair, the Demand uh, Reduction Committee, the Supply Reduction Committee, the Advocacy uh, Committee, and the Treatment and Rehab Committee. Uh, currently, Mr. Chair, uh, prosecution issues are being discussed under the Supply Reduction Committee. All of these uh, committees, Mr. Chair, are headed by undersecretaries, uh, Mr. Chair. And so I, we support the uh, position that current mechanisms are in place, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, sir. How about DOH? Thank you. Good uh, morning, Mr. Chair. No. As far as the DOH is concerned, sir, uh, we, we have reservations with regards to this bill because we already do the reporting to both the Dangerous Drugs Board, to which we are a member of the Committee on uh, Rehabil Treatment and Rehabilitation, and likewise, sir, sa ating uh, ICAD, 
ICAD na kung saan nagre-report din po kami regarding the status of our regarding the status of our rehabilitation processes po. So we believe that this is merely the same as what is ongoing po right now. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any anybody who wants to comment on this uh, bill? Pero bago siya magsalita, para we can proceed to another one. Okay, please, uh, DOJ. Please, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, during the previous uh, Congress, the Department has submitted a position paper on a similar bill, wherein um, at generally, in principle, we interpose no legal or constitutional objection to the proposed bill in creating, uh, then it was PRADA, now it's uh, Presidential Drug Enforcement Authority, in order to enhance further the efficacy of the law against dangerous drugs by unifying the four major programs, enforcement, prosecution, prevention, and rehabilitation, into a single government agency. However, Mr. Chair, uh, we, uh, while we support the creation of the uh, presidential DEA, we have reservations on the provisions of Section 7 of the proposed bill, which provides that the Anti-Drug Prosecution Bureau, which, is, which will be headed by an undersecretary, shall be responsible for the supervision of the Department of Justice, which is headed by no less than the Secretary of Justice. Relative to the prosecution of filing of illegal drug cases are properly and efficiently executed. Uh, we find that Section 7 diminishes the power of supervision and control of the Secretary of Justice over the Department. Under the revised administrative code, the executive branch shall have departments as are necessary for the functional distribution of the work of the president and for the performance of their functions. Uh, more importantly, it provides that the authority and responsibility for the exercise of the mandate of the department and for the discharge of its powers and functions shall be vested in the secretary who shall have supervision and control of the department. Thus, we find that there will be a disconnect if an anti-drug prosecution bureau shall have a supervisory power over the Department of Justice, which is the principal law agency of the whole government and which is both its legal counsel and prosecution arm of the government. As such, we suggested uh, the wordings for the uh, proposed Section 7 of the bill uh, as follows. The Anti-Drug Prosecution Bureau shall be responsible for the close monitoring and coordination with the National Prosecution Service of the DOJ. Insofar as the matter... Sabi ko, sabi ko, nadali mo. Yan yung naisip ko rin eh. Please continue. <laughs> Insofar as matters relative to the preliminary investigation or prosecution of illegal drug cases. We also suggest that the powers of the Anti-Drug Prosecution Bureau be also rewarded as follows. A, request for regular monthly reports from the NPSDOJ on the status of the prosecution of all drug-related cases in the country. B, request the NPSDOJ to conduct a periodic assessment or examination of all the personnel involved in the prosecution of illegal drug cases to ascertain that their duties are satisfactorily performed and C, to recommend to the Secretary of Justice to take such necessary action or step as prescribed by law to make a personnel of the NPS DOJ who fails or ne neglects his or her function relating to prosecution of illegal drug-related cases to perform what is incumbent upon him or her. So medyo i-reward -re lang po yung mga powers and functions that was provided in the Section 10. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Yan din nakita ko kagabi about binabasa ko, how can, sino ba magaling dito sa O&M, Organization and Management, sa mga, diba? how can, how can a bureau supervise a department? Kaya may problema sa wordings, diba? So tama yon bureau to bureau, NACPROS is a bureau, diba? National Prosecution Service is like a bureau under the DO, OJ. Uh, yes, sir, it's an office under the Department of Justice. Parang bureau rin siya ng, uh, ng D DOJ. Thank you. Uh, your uh, observations are uh, noted. So, meron pa ba iba para makaproceed tayo sa ibang bill? 
noted lahat yon at uh, isasama natin yung mga mga objection comments and everything sama natin dito sa report so kung wala na we will proceed to SB 462 ito special prosecutorial function of PDEA by Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. Uh, <clears throat> Objective nito is to expand the jurisdiction of PDEA by including a special prosecutorial function. Hirap nitong bisaya. Additional qualification for the Director General. The Director General must be a member of the Philippine Bar and must have engaged in the practice of law for at least 10 years in addition to the qualifications already provided under RA 9165. Creation of the Special Prosecutor's Office. The Special Prosecutor's Office shall be under the control and supervision of the PDEA and shall have exclusive jurisdiction over cases involving violations of RA 9165 which are non-bailable. So, ang gusto niyang hawakan lang ng PDA prosecutor are non-bailable uh, cases. Powers and functions of PDA special prosecutors. Exclusive jurisdiction to conduct preliminary investigation and prosec prosecute violations of RA 9165 in cases involving offenses which are non bailable Function of the Director General. Motions for the reconsideration of resolution of the PDA Special Prosecutors shall be within the exclusive jurisdiction of Director General of PDA. Appellate function of the DOJ. <clears throat> Motions for reconsideration from the resolution of the Director General may be filed with the DOJ Secretary. So, in just uh, yan yung laman ng uh, Senate Bill number 462. Any comment? Unahin ko itong DOJ. Comment. We have not uh, submitted yet a formal uh, position paper, but at the outset, this is our position on uh, Senate Bill 462. At the outset, while the intention of the proposed legislation is laudable, and we acknowledge that it is within the inherent power of the legislative in the exercise of its constitutionally mandated powers to make or amend laws, the department has reservation on the passage of the proposed bill. Mm. Under EO 292, uh, the Department of Justice is mandated to serve as the principal, principal law agency of the government, which shall be both its legal counsel and the prosecution arm of the government. Uh, however, uh, also, under Section 1 of EO 292, as the principal law agency of the government, it shall investigate the commission of crimes, prosecute offenders, and administer the probation and correction system of the government in all cases involving violations of penal laws, thus including uh, 9165. Uh, also, we find that there will likewise be a disconnect uh, as if the proposed bill will be passed into law because it is provided that the uh, resolutions of special prosecutors will be subject to the review of the Director General of uh, PDEA and thereafter the resolution of the Director General of PDEA will be submitted for review or for motion for reconsideration with the Secretary of Justice. So we are looking if, if, if that would be possible because they are not belonging to one department or they have no control and supervision over each other. Okay, thank you for that. 
Yeah. No question, uh, Attorney. Thank you. Uh, Pudia, come in. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. Uh, the position of Pudia on this uh, proposed bill number 462. Actually, uh, we have a prepared uh, position paper here ready for submission. And uh, the agency suppo uh, supports the proposed bill. However, may I manifest reservation on this, especially on the qualification of a director general that it must be a lawyer. I don't know if the other people will support me on this. Although we recognize that it is very important and significant that we will look into the prosecution part on the war on drugs. But I want to inform the body that the war on drugs is not a legal battle. It is not covered by any section or provisions or article under the law. It is a war that is directed on a very organized and syndicated body, group of individuals that is undermining our legislative, our economy, our uh, society. So the uh, leader or the director general who will be assigned on this must be well exposed on how to counter OCGs, not only on the domestic environment, but with a vast experience and vast uh, engagement on a global uh, uh, manner. Because the drug menace is not limited only to our domestic affairs. Majority of the chemicals and precursors and the drugs itself are coming from other countries. So, kung lalagay lang natin dito ay isang abogado, napakagaling sa litigation, without having a concise or a well-equipped uh, uh, well, uh, experience in uh, combating uh, organized crime groups will be having a problem. And I want also to manifest that the war on drug is a global concern already. No country has ever won on this war. They, it, is, it is a continuous effort by all countries and we are helping one another to confront it or to solve it all together in a global manner. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So your reservation is uh, limited on the qualification of the Director General. Not necessarily a lawyer. Yes. Uh, not it, not it, Any more comments? Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, since both DOJ and PDEA is a member of the board, uh, we, we want to leave it to both the agencies to discuss the matter and come up with a more effective uh, prosecutorial uh, processes, Mr. Chair. However, we agree with the observation of uh, ASIC Pimentel as to the uh, as to the designation of a lawyer, uh, Mr. Chair, as head of uh, PDEA. We feel that it would limit the pool of potential appointees, which which would generally entail management and not technical in nature. Uh, however, Mr. Chair, if the Senate will will push uh, uh, for the bill to be approved and create uh, to create a special prosecution service under PIDEA, then uh, the Director General would be reviewing uh, motions motions for reconsiderations under Section Three of the proposed bill, and should be at least a lawyer and a member of good standing of the Philippine Bar. Yes, also my take on this is that uh, baka mamaya, in this magtutok yung Director General ng PIDEA on operational matters, maiwan na sa opisina, sige basa, mag-review ng mga kaso na yan. So, hindi na sila nakatutok sa operasyon, more on administrative matters na lang, particularly legal, ka dahil dito nga sa kanyang review powers. But anyway, uh, any more comments on this? Right, sir. Mr. Chair, on that matter, 
to relieve to relieve the burden on the director general on the legal uh, burden there is we can create uh, an office or a service that can do the legal research for him so siya na lang magde-decide but oh uh, yes uh, noted sir noted thank but, you uh, okay pero what do you think uh, looking forward moving forward just in case mangyari mangyari itong batas na ito do you think maka-improve ito sa ating batting uh, average as far as uh, conviction of uh, drug cases is concerned? Pag mayroon na nakatutok talaga na special prosecution ng PDA, gaganda kaya ang takbo ng mga kaso natin? Uh, DOJ mo na. Do you think? Uh, well lang. Oh, opinion. Opinion mo. Gaganda kaya? Mr. Chair, uh, we have manifested this previously uh, that it is of the view, uh, the department is of the view that the creation of a special prosecution office is not the best solution to resolve the proliferation and the worsening problem on drugs in the country. Neither does it ensure to put an end to bungled handling of illegal drug cases as the success of prosecution of drug cases likewise depends on the evidence presented by the law enforcement agency. Thus, there must be a close coordination, competence, dedication, integrity, and professionalism between the prosecution and law enforcement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any more comments on this? Please. Good morning, sir. Um, actually, sir, uh, this, uh, this bill is uh, of the Special Prosecution Service is synonymous with the Ombudsman Law wherein uh, the ombudsman will uh, will prosecute uh, will conduct the preliminary investigation on uh, grab charges against the against the uh, public officers then they would also prosecute the 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 accused uh, when it comes to the sandigan bayan so if uh, uh, eventually sir if uh, the more uh, if there will be more prosecutors, the problem with the present problem is uh, the lack of prosecutors. So, if there uh, may be the intention of the law is that uh, there will be more prosecutors and uh, there will be uh, plenty of prosecutors to prosecute our drug cases. So, we support the bills, Your Honor. Thank you. Any more comments about the uh, DOF? May pera ba tayo pag uh, gawin natin ito? Kaya ba yung supportahan? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, ang concern lang po ng, ano, ng, hindi po ng DOF po, but personally po, uh, meron lang po ang dalawang provisions na gustong i, ano po, i put on notice po. Is yung number one, yung exclusive jurisdiction po ni, ano, ni special prosecutor. So, uh, Usually po kasi pagka nagkakaroon ng drugs cases, usually parang ang dami-daming nababiolate na batas. So, we would like lang to put a provision here na yung in case na marami talaga na violate po na batas, if this ano, bill pushes through po, na dapat dito po siya sa PIDEA po, hindi lang po uh, yung, yung act na nagko-constitute ng non-bailable offense sa PDEA pero yung yung mga maliliit lang na bagay sa prosecutor pa rin sa DOJ pa rin po mararaffle parang ganyan. And yung number two provision po is yung pagka nag-appoint po tayo ng mga special prosecutors ay eh napakadami pong napakadami pong <clears throat> parang court sa Philippines and yung mga RTCs natin parang mahirap pong immobilize sila para paikutin silang lahat sa buong Philippines. Napakadami pong drug cases. So, yun po yung mga concerns po ng ano natin. Parang every time na lang, gagastos po tayo na magta-travel sila. Thank you, Attorney Rigor. Uh, yun, yun na nakikita ko. That's why siguro uh, playing safe si uh, author nito na limited lang doon sa uh, yung mga non-billable cases. Kasi po i-cover na lahat para na sila gumawa sa sariling DOJ, sariling uh, National Prosecution Service. 
'di ba? Kasi widespread man talaga ang drug cases all over. So kaya siguro pinili lang niya na ang hawakan ng PDEA special prosecution is uh, yung mga big time na kaso para sa to to to, to ensure na mananalo pa sa kaso na ito. But anyway, thank you for your comments. Any more comments on this uh, in BI? Yeah. Sir, I think this is more practical approach now. Or rather than abolish the PTI, I think we should empower them by providing for uh, prosecutorial service. I think uh, uh, may enhance yung power nila because may nakapokus na uh, prosecutors uh, to situate that uh, na mamonitor nila yung progress rather than na uh, meron lang silang uh, service na nagmamonitor nung uh, status but this time it's the, all the successes eh. so it's rather than abolish them I think they should be more empowered yes. thank you thank you thank you for that comment Pidya yes, sir. sir thank you kay NBI for his uh, support. And I just want to raise also an issue. Uh, actually, uh, in the four uh, areas of concern, law enforcement, prosecution, rehab, and then advocacy natin, may nakikita akong problema natin. Dito, after the law enforcement at saka prosecution, hindi natin nakikita yung emerging problem that instead that we are so we are, uh, ano, we are solving the uh, problem of drugs after these people are uh, caught and they were put into jail. The, uh, the, the uh, possibility that these people will meet one another in one area when they are under custody so they share information and they develop a bigger enterprise. And then, because of the pre-bargaining, they will soon be out again. So they have enriched their knowledge and sources and links and distribution area. So they develop, they develop their own sub-local drug group. So instead of solving the problem, we are creating the problem in a bigger magnitude. Hindi pa natin na-address ito yung mga local drug group, ha? Pero, hindi pa rin natin na-address yung international drug group. Ang sinasabi ko dito, pag kinulong mo yung isang tao, pusher pa lang siya ngayon, uh, street level. Paglabas niyan, mag-create na yan ng sub-local drug group niya na sarili. So, anong nangyari sa programa natin? The more headache, law enforcement will encounter. That's all, uh, Mr. Chair. Totoo talaga, nangyayari yan. Dito so the deficiency in our uh, penitentiary services ay hirap talagang dapat, di ba? Isang room lang sila para walang kulaybans. Yung mga gaya ng mga super maximum uh, jails, individual yan. So walang communication. Pero nangyari sa atin, talagang halo-halo na lahat. Kasi but anyway, Chair, that, 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 that uh, ko, problem. Nakikita ko, Mr. Chair, mayroong temporary detention ng PDEA before they are committed sa, kung talaga, sa jail. Naku, ang saya-saya nila. <laughs> Para bang nagpaparty sila doon, nagkakatuwaan pa sila doon. You can just see the uh, atmosphere inside the lock-up. Doon pa lang yun na. Lalong-lalo na pag pumunta na sa city jail, makita na nila ang mga bossing nila doon. So, so more... more Yes, every support, year they will become. You are supporting the death penalty. Para hindi na yes. ito mag mahapi itong mga tao na ito. <laughs> yes, ah, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for that uh, support. More than 100%. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Any more? P pertaining to this bill. So, we will proceed to the part two. Part two. Working lunch tayo, ha? Huh? Please feel free to have your lunch while... Uh, our hearing is uh, ongoing. Dito na tayo sa mga Drug Rehabilitation Center bills. Number one, Senate Bill number 399, Establishment of Rehabilitation Center <clears throat> in every province by Senator Christopher Bongo. Uh, 
objective nito is establishment of a drug abuse treatment and rehabilitation center in every province in the country which shall be under the supervision of DOH organization. It shall be headed by a director assisted by two deputy directors who shall be appointed by the Secretary of Health and vested with powers generally exercised by a chief and assistant chief of government. Any comment? DOH. Sir. Good morning again, Mr. Chair. Uh, the DOH stands by the uh, uh, plans that the DOH has of establishing one inpatient or yung tinatawag natin residential drug treatment and rehabilitation center per region, one outpatient drug treatment and rehabilitation center per province, and of course support for all the community-based drug rehabilitation centers. Uh, as far as the, uh, the bill that was introduced by Senator Bongo, we support with reservations sa magkaroon po tayo ng, kasi hindi po masyadong specific on yung type of rehabilitation eh. We support it in the sense that one outpatient per province po, kailangan po natin talaga yan. And one residential per region, Your Honor. Thank you po. Thank you. Uh, it is being also uh, being uh, mentioned dito sa bill na susunod yung plano mo. I think mas maganda yun yung ganun. But anyway, we'll discuss that uh, in details pagdating doon sa bill na ito. So, any more comment on this? Sir? Mr. Chair. We agree with the observ or observation of the Department of Health. No? So, siguro, Mr. Chair, we can introduce a minor uh, amendment in the uh, proposal of uh, the good Senator, uh, Senator Bongo, providing for the establishment and support of a drug abuse, of an outpatient drug abuse treatment and rehab center, Mr. Chair. And I think that would address the uh, concern and that would reconcile the, pro uh, reconcile the proposal with the provisions of... Uh, the proposed Senate Bill 513 uh, by the Chairman. Another uh, 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 concern, Mr. Chair, just one minor uh, apprehension, Mr. Chair, is the uh, we, we, is with regards uh, w with regards with Section 3 of the proposed bill. Uh, sorry, the organization, Mr. Chair, Section 4 of the proposed bill, no? um, the board actually issued uh, minimum requirements as far as the head or the director of uh, the treatment and rehab centers are concerned. In the board regulation, Mr. Chair, we specified that anyone with uh, background with be uh, on behavioral management can be the head. As, this, uh, as the center director would mainly be, the function of the center director would mainly be ministerial, administrative, and not technical, Mr. Chair. Uh, we agree that a position is a must in a rehab center, but putting a position as a requirement for the director would limit our options, Mr. Chair, of, uh, uh, of uh, selecting a, a good uh, center head. I'm not saying, Mr. Chair, that physicians are not good center heads. <laughs> It's just that uh, we have seen uh, several rehabilitation centers, Mr. Chair, both private and government, uh, sorry, um, majority of them are private, being headed by non-physicians, no? some of them psychologists, social welfare officers, and others with behavioral background who are being managed uh, properly, uh, Mr. Chair. No? Thank you, uh, Yusik uh, Reyes. Actually, Ngayon ko lang nakikita, magaganda pa ng palisin ninyo sa DDB, no? Hindi ko lang masyadong nababasa, eh. Pero ang gaganda nung palisin ninyo. But anyway, sir, uh, per my personal experience also, nakita ko, ha, all over the Philippines, uh, nakita ko talaga ang pinaka-successful na mga drug rehabilitation and treatment uh, centers are those being run by the church, by the religious sector. And these are not doctors itong mga pare na ito, itong mga church leaders na nagagawa. Dahil nga, the more, the more you bring the patients closer to God, the more talaga na ma-reform sila. Yan talaga nakikita ko, honestly, my honest opinion. Kaya, but, hindi, hindi dapat hanggang doon lang tayo sa spiritual aspect. Supported by uh, medical and uh, other uh, behavioral uh, experts, to monitor these people. Pero so far, nakita ko yung run by the church, ang ganda ng uh, results nila. 
Any more comment on this uh, particular bill? Eh, pwede man natin itong i-joint na lang sa itong bill na isa para magkuko-author na lang yung mga authors nito. <coughs> Pariho naman sila ng purpose. <coughs> uh, so with that, uh, I, yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, sir, I, ano ko lang, no? thank you for DDB for supporting us dun sa outpatient programs natin, na at least one per province. We, uh, however, agree to disagree with him <laughs> dun sa aspeto na about physicians. But I want to clarify lang, sir, no? So as far as yung ating residential treatment and rehab centers na malalaki, especially the ones that are run by the government, mas maganda po that somebody of high technical level ang magpatakbo nito. Hindi lang niya naintindihan, not just the administrative part, but also the technical part of the treatment. Sa outpatient siguro, sir, mas, mas uh, may leeway tayo to open it up to the behavioral sciences, uh, to the behavioral professionals natin, at least the outpatient program po. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, I, I share the same uh, uh, observation na sinasabi mo, Doc. Uh, we'll proceed to the next bill. Meron pa? Is that? Uh, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, as an observation from PIDEA, uh, and it was also raised by Senator Bongo, the rehabilitation centers put up in... Region 3 in Mindanao, and there is another area has not been fully utilized, and he was asking why. And now we are proposing a regional facility on the same manner. So the more it will not be utilized. So, well, uh, yes, go ahead. In, my, uh, in our observation, uh, in the context of our drug. Uh, of our barangay clearing uh, operations. Sometimes, I observe that the LGUs uh, does not cooperate to bring out uh, the real uh, affected, uh, affected uh, drug personalities because it will aff affect their drug uh, free status. And then, for those who can afford also, they have two options. They can do it at their own and go to the private uh, facilities to avoid exposure. Or because they have money, they better sustain their vices. Kaya ganun, hindi sila lumalabas. Kaya we really appreciate your double barrel uh, uh, approach. And we really go at the doorsteps. However, Ito nga ang nagiging problema yan. Marami pa dun. Hindi lang lumalabas. At naapektuhan ngayon yung kanilang drug cleared status. Ayaw na nilang galawin yun. So kung maglalabas pa sila, tanggal na naman niya silang seal of good governance. E, Malaki-laki pa naman pondo yun na mawawala sa kanila. Anyway, yung ICAD na sinasabi mo, sir, kasama mo ang DILG doon, di ba? The LG, so that, yes, that, that's uh, where the power of the LG mm. comes in as mm. far as pressuring these barangay captains to mm. cooperate with our uh, war on drugs. Ang problema kasi, eh, siyempre, saludo na naman lahat tayo doon sa mga LGUs. Hawak na naman tayo lahat doon. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot say otherwise. P political will yan, mga commanders natin. Dapat uh, priority ito kaysa mag-sip-sip doon sa mga politiko na LGUs. But anyway, uh, kaya nga sinasabi mo na yung sa Nueva Ecija, hanggang ngayon hindi napupuno, di ba? Ang, ang, ang rason dyan na nakikita ko, number one, napakalayo para sa iba. Siguro kung taga Nueva Ecija siya, pwede siya mag-volunteer, mag doon. Pero kung taga Bindanao siya, taga Bisaya siya, taga Southern Luzon siya, napakalayo para pumunta doon. That's number one, number one reason. Kaya nga we are proposing, tama, I agree with the DOH, na per region, magkakaroon tayo ng isang, in, how do you term that? Inpatient? Inpatient, sir, oh. or residential. Res residential drug, uh, treatment drug treatment uh, center that will cater to the, yung mga grabe-grabe na na 
cases, di ba? Tapos, per province, magkakaroon tayo ng isang non-residential uh, drug rehabilitation and treatment center to cater doon sa mga, ano yan, stay out, uh, outpatient, outpatient uh, doon sa province. So, maganda niyan. I, I think uh, I, I subscribe to that. At isa pang naka, bakit ganun, kulang, if you observe, yung ating uh, out of the 1.3 million na nag-surrender noong 2016, 38% lang ang recorded ng PNP nag-voluntaryong nag-undergo ng uh, nagpaparehab. So meaning, merong 42% out of this 1.3 million surrenders na either bumalik sa kanilang dating gawi, kaya nag-surrender ngayon, kinabukasan, patay sa bypass operation dahil bumalik na kagad sa pagbibinta ng Shibu. At, or, yung iba, sariling, sariling rehab doon sa mga private uh, uh, rehab centers or yung iba, talagang nagbagong buhay na lang at tumahimik na lang sa gilid, yun yung ginagawa nila. So, that, uh, may, mayroon tayong isang bill na, that will try to address that dahil yun nga, yung mga proseso, gano'n, gano'n. Sunod na uh, ititakil natin itong uh, yung 513. But before that, so, wala, may, mayroon pa tayong comment para dito. Ah, si Kamala, sir. Si Atty. Rigor. Sir, actually, sir, uh, with the with the recent pronouncement of the Supreme Court ng unconstitutionality plea bargaining, there is a need talaga, sir, for a uh, numerous number of rehabilitation center. Kasi po, sir, yung hinuhuli natin na Section 5 and Section 11 na maliitan na small time, sir, na plea bargain, sir, ngayon to Section 15. The problem kasi, sir, ngayon, even if napakarami, sir, natin convicted na nag plea bargain sa Section 15, hindi po siya magkukwalify dun sa rehabilitation, that is, rehabilitation center natin. Either yung pumpusher na yon ay hindi gumagamit talaga ng drugs or uh, gumagamit man siya ng drugs, hindi po papasok doon sa parameters ng DOH para ma-admit siya sa rehabilitation center natin. It is also one of the main reasons kung bakit underutilized. Kahit sir, marami tayong surrenderers, maaari hindi siya ganun ka-addict para pumasok doon sa rehab na uh, run by, uh, by DOH, sir. So, yung naging problema, underutilized, sir, talaga, dahil hindi siya papasok doon sa parameter para mapasok ka doon. So, pero kung ginawa yung maliit-liit lang by region, distribute yan, sigurado ko, mapupuno yan. Kasi, nila, kasi lahat napakalaki doon sa New eh, isang facility. Mahirap talaga mapuno yan dahil ang mag-a-avail dyan, sigurado, yung mga taga Central Luzon lang, yung malapit. Pero all others, ayaw talaga. Sir? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in connection to the uh, issue raised by the PNP, yung ano, drug personalities uh, went on plea bargaining na hindi matanggap daw ng rehabilitation centers simply because they are not users. So, PIDEA came up with the program, we call it Balay Silangan. Uh, we have established a lot of Balanga, uh, Balay Silangan already as the primary project of our Director General. It caters to drug personalities who are not drug dependents. Ito yung mga posers. So, Here, they undergo a program. Uh, I don't know the program that uh, caters to them before they are finally released back to the mainstreams. And second, second item, uh, this is in relation again to the rehabilitation center. Yung sabi kasi ni DOH is residential approach. But in our uh, point of view is that to reform, uh, to, uh, to uh, what we call rehabilitate somebody, it cannot be done without cutting 
the uh, cutting the comfort zone of the subject. If it is within the region, he is still within his comfort zone. So, dapat i-isolate natin yung drug personalities ng mga to, drug dependents, in a very specialized facility. Para very uniform ang output natin. Hindi yung kalat-kalat. Sometimes, maapektuhan pala ng pilipita. I will, I will cut you short on oh. that, sir. Kaya nga, nagkaganon, nagkaganon na, depende kasi yan sa severity ng addiction ng tao. Yung i-cater doon sa uh, resid uh, ano sir? resident NPC or residential? Yes, sir. Residential facilities, yan yung medyo grabe. Ang i-cater doon sa non-residential, yan yung makukuha lang sa dito ka muna, itong araw na ito, pagkahapon, uwi ka sa bahay ninyo, dun balik na naman, kasi hindi gaano grabe. Meron naman sa municipal level na sinasabi natin uh, uh, community-based drug uh, uh, rehabilitation program na more on counseling lang dahil nga medyo mababa yung level ng dependence nila sa droga. Kaya we have to treat them uh, according to the severity of their uh, drug dependency. So yun, yun ang uh, laging basis ngayon. Mr. Chair, the danger there is that kung napolitiko ito, we will never have a genuine drug clearing uh, program. Kaya nangyayari yan kasi hindi seryoso din ang mga NGOs dito kahit doon sa barangay level. They cover up their own mess. So, kailangan seryoso tayo dito. If we really need to clear uh, barangay and the totality of a municipality, pukpukin natin yung mga LGS dito. Hindi pwede na residential, residential pa dyan. O ano, dapat we must have a very drastic and very uh, stringent rehabilitation and reformation facility. Kasi kung magdrama-drama tayo in three years, balik naman tayo sa so, dati. Eh, uh, we can uh, assure your, the compliance of the LGS too. Your, your point is well taken, sir. Uh, but anyway, uh, yung kasi pagdating dyan sa pagdating dyan sa rehabilitation treatment, it's no longer our forte. Forte na yan ang health. So, let's leave it up to them. Sila ang expert dyan kung how to treat these people. Please, uh, Department of Health. Mr. Chair, uh, thank you po. Nakakatuwa, Mr. Chair, na alam nyo na rin pala yung mga different levels ng rehabilitation at saka severity ng drug use. Nag-retire na ako dyan, the doctor. <laughs> Nag-retire na ako dyan. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead, continue. Yes, sir. Uh, if I know, sir, ano po, um, the people that come from the plea bargaining are what we call sa DOH, sa medical field, na special population. Kakaiba din po kasi sila, no? Uh, they have a rehabilitation problem and they also have a problem with our uh, justice system. And to handle the rehabilitation problem, alam po namin yon. Pero medyo nakakaproblema kami dun sa justice system side kasi po, eh. Sanay kami sa pasyente. Pero pagdating na dun sa mga PDLs, medyo hirap po kami sa reformation, hirap po kami sa, sa aspect ng pag deal nila. The safety and security level is a lot higher. So we really need a special facility, tulad po ng sinabi ni Pedeya, that will handle that special population. Ang isa mga sa mga problema namin na na-experience during the time na nag-plea bargaining po tayo is nahahaluan yung mga volunteers natin na mga drug pushers na nagpi-plea bargain. Ngayon ang nangyayari po, pag nahalo sila, itong mga drug pushers natin, nag -e establish sila ng network of customers, of clients. So, imbis na naibabago natin itong mga volunteers natin, mga voluntary, eh nagkakaroon pa ng connections paglabas nila, and then nagkakaproblema na naman po ulit. So, it's detrimental. So, it is the stand po namin that we believe that this special population needs a special service, a special facility, na nagkikater lang talaga exclusively para sa kanila. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Very valid observation, Doc. Uh, yun talaga, prevailing yan. Please, uh, thank you Mr. for that. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, just to briefly share uh, one of the uh, meetings, uh, special meetings conducted by the board. We were discussing the plea bargaining issue. And in that meeting, no less than Secretary Anyo, Mr. Chair, uh, recommended that the long-term solution for plea bargainers would be to put up facilities within the BJMP no, to strengthen BJMP's uh, programs as far as uh, rehabilitation and re reformation is concerned. 
So basically, Mr. Chair, that's consistent with the proposed 5113 uh, bill, Mr. Chair, and uh, I think that's the long-term solution, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Wala na. Let's proceed to the next bill. Okay na. So the next bill is uh, all your uh, comments are uh, well uh, noted. Senate Bill Number 464, Establishment of a Re Rehabilitation Center in the City of Bacoor, Cavite, by Senator Ramon Bong Rebilla. Objective: Establishment of a Drug Treatment and Rehab Center in the City of Bacoor, Province of Cavite, which shall be under the direct control and supervision of DOH. Organization shall be headed by a director appointed by the Secretary of Health and vested with the powers generally exercised by the chief of a government devolved hospital. Uh, how do we treat this uh, bill? Pwede ba itong, pwede ba itong i-join na lang doon sa ating uh, ibang bill at siguruhin lang natin na yung para sa Cavite mapunta sa Bacoor para satisfy itong bill na ito. What do you think? Please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. No? Uh, geographically, Bacoor Cavite has advantages in terms of the availability of drug rehabilitation centers. Uh, by next month po, early next month, we will be opening up a drug rehabilitation center at Las Piñas, which is only a few kilometers away from Bacoor. Uh, we have uh, Bikutan Rehabilitation Center, again po, dito sa Southern Metro Manila. We are already in the process of establishing a drug treatment and a residential drug treatment and rehab center dito sa Trece Martira City, and it will be, we are targeting to have it open by 20. 21, early 2021, 500 bed capacity po yan. And we have a uh, facility in Tagaytay City, again in Cavite, which is also in a transition phases right now. So as far as a residential drug treatment and rehabilitation center is concerned po, marami silang available for the town of, for the city of Bacoor. If I may suggest po, ano, an outpatient program would be more feasible for the city of Bacoor to be undertaken by the local government unit. That would be our recommendation for this bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, alam mo, kaya siguro na kuha nito na priority ni Senator Bong dahil yung kanilang chief of police dyan, masyadong mas, masipag manghuli. Dami lang huli dyan. Kaya gusto niyang marehab yung mga nahuli. Including, hindi taga Bacor, ha? taga ibang munisipyo, pupunta dyan, magtransak ng business, na huli dyan, dyan nakukulong. Kaya, as you have said, merong ilan available within the province of Cavite? There will be two available sa province of Cavite and then two sa southern Metro Manila. DOH run? Yan? DOH run lahat po. Okay. Las Piñas, meron ka pa sinabi Las Piñas? Las Piñas, sir. Dito Manila still, di ba? Southern Metro po. Southern. Any comment, further comment on this, on this bill? Siguro, may rin na lang natin to sa ibang bill. Siguro rin lang natin mapunta sa Bacor, yung para sa Cavite. Uh, the next is uh, Senate Bill Number 513, Non-Imprisonment of Drug Users and Establishment of Additional Residential and Non-Residential Centers in Every Region by Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa. Objective, establishment of additional residential and non-residential rehabilitation centers in every region. Rehabilitation instead of imprisonment of arrested drug users. First offense, to be referred to an appropriate drug treatment and rehabilitation center. Second, a succeeding offense shall be considered as a case of relapse and shall again be recommitted to a drug treatment and rehabilitation facility. Pareho lang. Sige, balik-balik kayo. Publication and distribution of materials on dangerous drugs. The DOH is included in the list of government agencies mandated to cause development, publication, and distribution of information on dangerous drugs to the students, faculty, parents, and community together with DepEd, CHED, and TISDA. Additional mandate for a drug-free workplace. 
the programs of DOLE for a drug-free workplace shall ensure that employees found positive for drug use will be referred to a trained health service provider for further screening and intervention. Voluntary submission of drug dependent. Voluntary submission shall no longer require a court order to examine the applicant but shall be screened by a health service provider and assessed thereafter by a DOS accredited physician. Should a person be found to be drug dependent, he shall be referred to an appropriate drug treatment and rehabilitation facility, the duration of which shall depend on the, the, on the determined severity of drug dependent, dependence. Confinement shall no longer be limited to a maximum period of one year, but shall be based on the diagnosis and recommendations of DOH accredited physician. Aftercare and follow-up treatment. Certificate of completion of the prescribed treatment and rehabilitation program shall now, shall now be issued by a DOS accredited physician. Rehabilitation centers, establishment, ito na sa sabi natin kanina, of at least one residential drug rehabilitation center in its region and one non-residential drug rehabilitation center in its province depending on the ability of funds. The DOJ shall establish a rehabilitation center within the penitentiary facilities for those with criminal offenses. Maybe for those convicted criminals, siguro ito. Additional duty of the DOH. The DOH shall likewise regulate the license to prescribe one, dangerous drugs preparation in any form and or number two, drug preparations controlled chemicals. Sa ngayon ba, ito i-perform lang DOH, hindi? Ito yung performed by FDA, Food and Drug Administration. FDA. FDA? FDA. 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 FDA pala. Okay. Thank you. So, yun lang yung salient points ng uh, Senate Bill Number no. 513. Ang pinakakuan dito is, saan na yun? Yung, yung, oh, ikaw mo nga, yung, saan na? Yung process, yung, yung process, no. Yung current provision ng Section 54, RA 9165, na sinusunod natin ngayon, yung voluntary submission of a drug dependent to confinement, treatment, and rehabilitation. Ako ngayon, confirm ako na drug user. Nag-volunteer ako ng paparihab. Tingnan niyo yung process na pakahaba na very discouraging ang drug user, pupunta sa DDB. Sir, gusto ko magparihab. Sabi ng DDB, pwede, pero hindi tayo lang yung court order. So, pang DDB, pupunta sa korte, magmanipis sa korte, sir, dapat isyuhan ito ng order for uh, rehabilitation. Itong volunteer, nag-volunteer na eh. Volunteer na gusto magparihab. Then, the court issues the order directing the Department of Health. Oh, ito si Mr. Juan de la Cruz, pwede ninyong i-rehab. I-rehab ninyo. Sabi, ah, hindi pala for uh, examination ito sa DOH. Na malaman na, nung ma-examin ng DOH, ma-diagnose na talagang dapat, dapat i-rehab itong tao na ito ang DOH mag-feedback sa court na sir, pwede ito i-rehab. Dahil na, totoo talaga. Uh, Kung na ito, uh, masyado na itong addict. Now, after that report from DOH, ang court ngayon mag-issue ng order. To direct this uh, person to, to be rehabilitated in the rehabilitation centers. So, napakahap ang proseso. Very discouraging on the part. Ah, sabi nga ng user ah, ng isang drug addict, gusto, nag-volunteer na ako, pahirapan pa ninyo ako uh, uh, para ma 
para ma-rehab. Ngayon, ang ating pinapropos na amid mes dito, sa SB under SB number 513, section 54, ano yun, 9165, voluntary submission of drug dependent to treatment and rehabilitation facilities. Itong drug user, pupunta na lang sa DOH para magpa-assist. Sir, o kaya punta sa polis, sir, magpa- gusto ko magpa-rehab. Yung polis naman, dalhin doon sa DOH para pa-assist. Sabihin ng DOH, oh, kailangan talaga ito ma-rehab. Dahil, uh, wala, mag-certify lang ang DOH. Diretso na yung drug user sa rehabilitation center. Magpa-rehab siya. I recommend on this, itong proposal amendment natin, to simplify. Ako ko lang, I'm not a lawyer, pero gusto ko lang talaga na ma-rehab kaagad itong mga dependent na ito. Anong masasabi niyo dyan? Please, comment. Okay, good afternoon again, Mr. Chair. Uh, mas maganda po itong setup na ito na diretso na ang drug user sa rehabilitation center. Ang nagiging problema natin before po with the old system, voluntaryo na silang dumadating sa rehabilitation. Pagdating nila doon, nakikita nila yung tedious process, nagkakaroon ngayon ng second thoughts itong mga to na pumasok sa rehabilitation. Habang nagpo-proseso po, nawawala yung drive para magbago at ayun, bumabalik na naman po sila sa bisyo. Now, having simplified all of this po, we really support this. And also, ano po, no? I, I do believe that uh, meron kami tinatawag na no wrong door policy. So kahit sinong lapitan mo, maigaguide ka na, pumunta ka na lang sa rehabilitation. Whether that be the police, the Anti-Drug Abuse Council, and the LGU, o diretso silang pumunta sa DOH. Na natatanggapin sila at mag-guide sila na, ng tamang uh, treatment plan. Kung ito ba ay dapat sa rehabilitation center, na residential, outpatient, o sa community man po. We strongly support this, ano, sir, this uh, Section 54 amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Sir, as a DDP mo lang. Uh, uh, hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, likewise, uh, Mr. Chair, we strongly support this long overdue amendment of the provisions on treatment and rehab. Um, matagal na namin problema ito, Mr. Chair. In fact, uh, we tried to uh, issue several board regulations just to uh, minimize the uh, lengthy process, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a comment, Mr. Chair. The assessment process can actually be uh, divided into two, the screening and the drug dependency e examination, Mr. Chair. Be to be undertaken by? By the physician. The yung, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Please. Continue. Sir, yung screening, uh, Mr. Chair, can be done by trained paramedicals. They, they just use a tool, uh, Mr. Chair, and already they can uh, say whether the, uh, the, the user can avail of community-based and even general interventions, uh, Mr. Chair. Now, for hardcore individuals, uh, those with high risk of use, uh, necessarily, Mr. Chair, it should be uh, examined by a physician, and those uh, shall be repaired, uh, repaired accordingly to the interventions necessary for them, Mr. Chair. Um, we have just some minor uh, suggestions, uh, Mr. Chair, in the Please proposed uh, bill. Um, first, uh, Mr. Chair, on Section uh, 45, the publication and distribution of materials on dangerous drugs, we recommend, Mr. Chair, that all member agencies of the board shall support the drug advocacy and shall cause the development, publication, distribution of information support. So it should not be limited to just uh, several agencies, Mr. Chair. All uh, should be supporting the campaign. And then, uh, Mr. Chair, on Section 47, on the uh, drug-free workplace, uh, line 37, uh, uh, sorry, line 38, uh, we want to amend, uh, Mr. Chair, the, uh, the statement, Mr. Chair, such programs shall ensure that employees found positive for drug use will be referred to a trained health facility uh, provider. Uh, our proposal, Mr. Chair, in view of the, uh, the, uh, the statement mentioned, we propose that mechanisms should be in place to help employees who are drug users to be provided with appropriate interventions. Uh, Mr. Chair, kasi uh, pag nilagay natin such programs shall ensure that employees found positive for drug use will be referred to a health uh, service, 
what would happen, Mr. Chair, to the one-strike policy of the enforcement sector? So, for example, sir, the enforcement sector, the police, uh, PIDEA, uh, we have a standing policy, Mr. Chair, na dahil you belong to the enforcement sector, you're implementing uh, drug enforcement activities, therefore, uh, you need to, pag nag-positive ka, dapat tanggal, uh, Mr. Chair, no, as a policy. But, uh, we are encouraging them, parang tukhang, Mr. Chair, we are encouraging them to submit themselves. No, kung alam na nilang uh, uh, user sila in the first place, wag na nilang abangan na madrug test pa sila. They should already present themselves to the superiors and admit drug use for treatment. No? So, ang proposal namin, Mr. Chair, yun nga, uh, mechanism should be in place to help employees, lalo na, sir, uh, sa enforcement, yung mga nagbo-volunteer na, no? uh, to be provided with appropriate interventions. Now, for uh, non-enforcement agencies, uh, yun, it's up to the uh, uh, policy of the agency, Mr. Chair, if uh, they shall be provided with uh, interventions. Well, ang, ang take ko dyan, sir, is uh, pag law enforcement agency ka, no mercy. Yes, sir. Yeah, no yes, mercy sir. naman. Is, uh, one strike policy. Precisely. Tapos, precisely. Sabihin mo pa. Precisely. Kali mo, mag voluntary surrender, sir. Tama. Na-addict ako sa kakooperate ng siya po. Tama. Magparehab ako, tulungan mo ako. So, maawa ka. Tama. Tulungan mo siya magparehab. Pero kahit na naawa ako sa iyo, iho, tatanggalin talaga kita. Tama. O, awa ako, pwede kita iparparehab, pero... Hindi na kita pwedeng tanggapin dito dahil wala na sira na yung record mo dito. Bad record na yung record mo dito. Di ba? Precisely, Kaya Mr. Ganun. Chair. Kasi Kung sir, baka mamaya, pag nag-volunteer sa uh, PDA agent, pupunta kay sir, sir. Pag-prehab ako. Sige, prehab ka. Tapos clear ka. Okay lang, sige, balik ka. Trabaho ka naman ulit. Baka mag ganun mangyari, ha? Precise. Dapat strict to tayo dito. Tama, no mercy Mr. pagdating sa mga ganun. Precisely, Mr. Chair. Kasi as warded, such programs, pag nag-positive uh, sa workplace, shall ensure that employees found positive for drug use will be referred to a trained health service provider. And this will include uh, the enforcement sector. No? Pag nilagay natin to, Mr. Chair. So, I... Klarin natin yan. Klarin natin yung... Yes, sir. Uh, expand lang natin, Mr. Yan Chair. Yan yung amendment na gusto mo. Yes, sir. Natin. I, we, will so, submit, we will submit, Mr. Chair, the uh, wordings. So, duly. Sir, kung duly. Sir, about uh, ito, non-law enforcement uh, workplace, how are you, ano bang ginagawa nyo ngayon dito? Sir, uh, it's so far, pero kami, ano sir eh, uh, Department Order 5303, it was uh, promulgated in, uh, I think, ito. yeah, by Secretary Patricia Santo Tomas. Ang ano dito, sir, pagka na tama na drug dependent siya, sabay screening test, inibigyan pa siya ng confirmatory test. Tapos pagka talaga na confirm na drug dependent siya, pinaparehabilitate siya, sir. Pero kailangan first time lang. Pag second time, sir, pwede na siya i-terminate sa employment under the provisions of the labor code sa grounds for termination, which is a serious misconduct. Ang, ang treatment ng basta second offense na sir eh, pwede na siya i-terminate ng employer. Kaya lang ang approach dito sir is uh, tripartite na eh. Ang, ang government through the DOLE, yung employer at saka yung, yung union, kung unionized or employees organization kayo doon. Kung hindi unionized. Asan sir? Union? Yes sir. Kung unionized yung establishment, kung hindi yung employees uh, uh, representatives, sila ay nagpo-formulate ng mga policies within the, the uh, workplace, sir. Kasi kailangan i, i ano natin dito, i-involve din yung pati mga workers eh, sa... sa okay. Hindi sa rehabilitation, sir, sa policies sa tungkol sa drug-free workplace, sir. Okay. So this covered by, that is covered by a department order yes, sir, na ganon. This was uh, established in 2003 pa po. 2003? When, when uh, immediately after the Dangerous Drugs Act was uh, passed. Eh. Okay. So, any more comment? Yes, sir. Uh, Invey mo na, sir. Invey. 
Yes, sir. Sir, definitely, no, it will shortcut the process uh, of rehabilitation. Ang concern lang natin, sir, without the court order is uh, these people may escape or uh, and what will be the basis para hurihin sila. Or they can leave anytime they want because there's no court order, sir. That's... Paano man ito? Voluntaryo man silang pumasok. So, voluntaryo silang lalabas kung ayaw na nila. Parang gano'n, di ba? Yes, sir. Yes, wala mo hold, legal hold sa kanila. Yes, sir. Yung, oh. yung uh, rehab niya, it will not continue, sir. Because they have the option anytime to leave. Eh. So, Tama with rin. court order, I think uh, they cannot leave Maganda, maganda rin yung comment ng LBI. Paano ito gawin natin? Yes, DOH. Actually, sir, marami namang mga reasons. We are not removing the court order. Uh, sir, meron tayong court order na, uh, for voluntary admissions, meron tayong court order for compulsory admissions, at saka yung mga court order because of uh, sentensya ito ng court. Uh, for some instances, not all, but for some instances, voluntary silang pumapasok. We want to make it easy for them. Yung iba naman na hindi voluntaryo, yung dinala ng magulang, dinala ng asawa, pwede naman silang ipasok na binolunteer sila ng asawa, but we need a court order for that. We must have a court order for that. Protection niya ng pasyente, protection din niya ng uh, rehabilitation center. Pwedeng kasuhan ng ano eh, uh, illegal detention ang center. At the same time also, kung sa pilitan silang ipinasok, baka naman hindi drag ang issue niyan, baka may family issue yan, like mana, property, and so on, sa pilitan silang ipapasok. So, may screen that out legally. We do not recommend na tanggalin ng court order, but we are opening up a new avenue na makapasok sila voluntarily para mas mapadali ang sistema. And if I may add siguro, sir, sagutin ko rin yung sa ano, uh, dun sa kay uh, DDB at saka kay DO, Dole, I actually agree, sir, na there are some um, uh, professions that should have a one-strike policy. Isa na po dyan yung mga law enforcement natin as stated by the DDB. And siguro sa private sector, sir, yung mga may hawak ng public conveyances na halimbawa ay pilot. Pilot, bus driver, na kung saan hawak nila ang buhay ng tao during the, um, during the time of their work. Perhaps, sir, we can... Doctor. Huwag na muna, doktor. <laughs> Tignan natin ang pagkakat. But well, anyway, <laughs> so yung mga ganong sitwasyon, sir, siguro for the, ano, would have some exceptions uh, that, uh, in positions that put uh, public safety. Medyo maging magigit po tayo doon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dole. Uh, uh, I was talking about that in general, sir. Kasi, ah, uh, under the, the, the department order, ito, it applies to all uh, kinds of uh, employees. Ngayon yung sinasabi ni Doktor is uh, exceptions. Ngayon, with respect to the exceptions, sir, ang aming policy dyan is huwag tanggalin. Baka pwedeng ilagay sa ibang positions. Like for example, kung pilot siya, huwag siya pangali pa rin ang aeroplan. Baka pwede siya mag-ground crew or ano, kung papayla, siyempre. Delikado pa rin yun. Tinanggal mo pa kay Piloto, ginawang ground crew. Hi ngayon, gagano-gano. Ginagawa yung makina ng aeroplano. Hindi na lock ng gusto yung bolt. Crash pang aeroplano niyan. Hindi, hindi, sir. I mean, yung, siyempre, meron na siyang clearance, sir, na narehab siya. Kasi hindi naman dati tatanggapin na, kasi meron provision dito ng mga six months kailangan mag-undergo siya ng rehabilitation. Tapos pag-return niya sa kanyang trabaho, kailangan may certificate siya na rehab siya, sir. Anyway, pag once uh, magawa itong batas na ito, we, we suggest na kayo mismo, yung department order niyo, mga administrative order niyo, must be aligned with this uh, law. Otherwise, magkakaroon tayo ng GCPA miss nito. Uh, <laughs> iba yung batas, iba yung IRR. Uh, mahirap na. Kaya dapat gawin niyo yan. We recognize, sir, that itong department order na to was based on the old law. Kaya kung magpapas kayo ng bagong law ngayon, of course, we will have to... Baguhin niyo. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing that. Si NBI, paano? Satisfied ka ba doon sa sagot doon? 
<laughs> no sir, kasi this is voluntary. So if you add the uh, under rehab center, I think they can process the court order while the person is uh, well in custody. Yeah, just to uh, make sure that he cannot leave. So hindi lang magka-process sir yung uh, family or the the drug dependent, it's the rehab centers. Pero, ongoing na yung treatment niya. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pwede, pwede rin siguro. I, I, don't, I don't know. Sa, paano ba niyo mga kuha niya? Kasi sabihin na yung mamaya, ng praise ng kuha na nag-volunteer ako, pasok dito. Tapos ngayon, ayaw ko na. Volunteer din kung lumabas. Walang hold ang kuha. Walang hold ang gobyerno. Walang hold ang rehab center. Wala tayo. Hindi natin mapigilan. Pero kung may court order, Pag may court order, ano ba nakalagay sa court order? You have to undergo or kailangan tapusin mo yan pag hindi matapos. Uh, you can be arrested. Kung hindi mo tapusin yan, may gano'n ba sa court order? I think so, sir. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, sa court order naman po nakalagay that they have to, based on the, the existing law 9165, that they have to undergo rehabilitation for six months to one year. So, kailangan nilang tapusin talaga yon And upon the completion ng kanilang rehabilitation, we write to the court uh, recommending na i-discharge na yung pasyente at mag-undergo na po ng aftercare. So, obligado po silang tapusin yung um, rehabilitation program. Paano ba yan? Hindi pa rin natin masimplify itong provision na ito kung mag-seek tayo ng court order. Yung discouraging number one discouraging uh, factor dito sa mga surrenderers, itong procedure nito ang haba. Yung court. This will not, your, your honor. Uh, yes, sir. Honor, sir. Uh, yes, voluntary will not be a large percentage. And it's uh, something that we try to encourage right now na pumasok sila sa voluntary system. Na, ano, we have we have cases. Not so much. Not so much. So it will not have that big an effect on the general aspect ng uh, court orders. But still, sir, malaking bagay na mapadali kasi ma-encourage sila eh. Ma-encourage sila eh. Na, ako ang take ko dito is that since nag-volunteer yung tao, seryoso talaga siya na gusto magbago, gusto ma-reform. So hindi yan siya sisipat in the middle of the process. Ako lang ha, tingin ko. Anyway, kung mag-decide siya siya, but then it's their loss, not the government's loss, di ba? Bakit pwede habulin yan? Mahala ka kung ayaw mo na. Mas, pero since nag-volunteer siya, give him a chance to be rehabilitated. Dahil for all we know, talagang decided siya, decidido siya na magbagong buhay. Tapusin po itong rehabilitation program na ito. But anyway, your uh, comment is well taken uh, in BI. Siguro mamaya yan dito sa... Doon naman, ititake natin yung hindi nag-voluntaryo. Please, uh, PNP, Colonel Rigor. Actually, sir, uh, uh, the, the intent of uh, the bill is uh, is uh, to encourage those who volunteer. Anyway, sir, volunteer lang naman eh. Kung gusto mo talaga pumasok, pumasok ka. Ngayon, sir, pagka lumabas ka, then papa, ikaw, mapupunta ka siya doon sa involuntary. Ik, mahu, magiging subject ka na ng one magiging subject ka na maaari, there will come a time na kung hindi ka magbabago talaga, mahuhuli ka. Then, ang magiging procedure mo, sir, involuntary, which is may court order. Tama. Tama nga. At anyway, ito, gusto kong i-take up din sa inyo. For the case, for doon sa kaso na mga hindi magvoluntaryo, halimbawa, voluntaryo nag-surrender sa tokhang, the drug test ng PDA, ng PNP, Lumabas, positive. Hindi ba natin sila pwedeng, hindi pa tayo pwedeng gumawa ng batas na lahat ng positive confirm drug user mag-undergo ng drug rehabilitation or drug treatment? Well, magkakaroon ito ng conflict between the, the, the mandate of the government to secure at to to, ano bang word is yan? Alagaan, pangalagaan, hmm. 
BOC, sino BOC? Umalis na? Ah, gusto mo umalis na? Sige, please. Oh, no problem. Tapos naman yung kwan, discussion natin sa inyo. Sige. Thank you, ha? Thank you. Thank you for attending. Magkukonflict dito yung mandato ng gobyerno na pangalagaan yung help ng kanyang mga mamamayan at putiktahan yung security ng mga tao sa palibot nito ang isang drug addict. At on the other hand, yun ang karapatan ng isang tao na basic na hindi mo siya pwedeng i-rehab or uh, i-cartel yung kanyang freedom of movement kung ayaw niya. Paano ba natin ito paglalaban ato rin eh? Dio Jim, anong commit mo dito? Magbabanggaan yung mandato ng gobyerno na pangalagaan yung uh, kalusugan ng kanyang mamamayan at saka yung putiktahan ang safety ng mga mga tao sa palibot nitong isang drug addict. As compared dito sa isang karapatan ng isang tao na hindi mo pwedeng i-cartel yung kanyang freedom of movement kung nandun siya naka narirehab siya kung ayaw niya. Paano ba ito natin na uh, i-reconcile? Kayong mga abogado, help us. Uh, Mr. Chair, in my personal opinion, I think it would depend on each personal circumstances. And uh, sometimes it is within the police power of the government and also uh, within its power and uh, function and mandate to protect the citizenry against the effects of illegal drugs. Any more comment? Yeah, PNP. Uh, Actually, sir, um, if you voluntarily, and actually, sir, the only, the only way you will be able to be prosecuted for Section 15, which is drug use, is to undergo drug testing. Okay? And if you voluntarily uh, subject yourself into drug testing, then that positive result is the, the evidence against you, uh, is the evidence against you to be prosecuted and be found guilty for drug use. Ang penalty lang naman din po, sir, first time offender, ay rehabilitation. So pag nag-voluntarily undergo ka ng drug testing, automatic, sir, rehabilitation center ang bagsak mo. Sir, kung ayaw niya, yes, sir, ayaw niya, positive siya, kung ayaw niya magpaparehab. Uh, sir, uh, hindi, actually, sir, pag, sir, positive ka, sir, if I file mo lang, sir, sa court yun, the PNP or any other law enforcement agency may file with the court na section 15. Kasi, sir, may voluntary naman, sir. Wala, wala tayong problema doon sa wala tayong problema sa constitutional rights ng akusado dahil voluntary nag-undergo siya ng drug testing eh. So yung evidence nature, ipafile ko lang sa Department of Justice, then the court will issue an order ordering him to undergo mandatorily, uh, forcibly, to undergo drug, uh, drug rehabilitation, sir. Ang... ang ang magkuha na sir nun, ang mag, uh, magsisimula ng proseso ay yung mag-undergo siya voluntarily ng drug testing. The rest is just procedural under the law, sir. So, kailangan pa rin ng court order, no? Court order pa rin po, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, we're looking at two things po kasi eh. Uh, Section 15, sir, uh, Mr. Chair. Section 15, yun yung mga nahuling gumagamit and classified sila as drug users and they are culpable to the full extent of the law. And for Section 15, ang um, penalty is uh, rehabilitation. Now, Section 54 is voluntary and it will go through that uh, prescribed process po na ginawa ninyo. So, there's, these are two separate um, ways of entry into a rehabilitation facility. As far as yung drug testing is concerned, voluntary, we believe in the Department of Health that since you come in voluntarily, that you should not be um, forced 
into any form of treatment, whether that be drug rehab or for any other disorder naman po, not just drug uh, addiction, that they not be forced into the appropriate treatment. They are given the appropriate, uh, um, ano ba term namin, yung um, information regarding their condition and the appropriate treatment. Voluntary po, no? pinag-usapan natin dito po, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, yung sa pagka-voluntary ng pasyente. So, to get into the system, being a health concern, you have the option to come in, you have the option to go out. But, on the other hand also, kung ipinasok ka ng family mo dahil ikaw ay uh, problema na nila, although that is volunteered by the family, para sa amin, volunteered pa rin yan, but since you are resisting the admission, kailangan natin ng court order. Now, there was a suggestion na, um, to a certain extent, Your Honor, na pagpasok, saka na lang asikasuhin ang uh, court order. That, Your Honor, is also possible na maasikaso, not just by the DOH, but also by the family and other uh, agencies that support the admission of a patient. Uh, meron lang tayong time limit kasi eh. Um, the DOH is not mandated to detain anybody. Uh, the law enforcement, yes, I think, for a period of 22 hours. I'm not sure. Parang ganoon. So, eh, mahirap po sa amin na mag-admit ng pasyente without their consent. At baka po tayo mabalikan naman. Mahirap nga yung uh, rehab now, court order later. <laughs> Pwede pa rin tayo dyan magkaka-arbitrary detention. So, you're raising your hand, NBI? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I think ang... Uh, cannot compel a person to be uh, to be drug test no so that's a lot it must be random except in workplaces like in government agencies uh, required yung mag drug test ka but if you approach a person like in uh, uh, you go to a house of a person and subject him to a drug test i don't think that's allowed no but after uh, he voluntarily uh, if he if he's found positive using drugs, I think the state should step in and uh, protect him okay? because it's the role or the obligation or responsibility of the government to take care of its citizens, citizenry, including to protect him from himself. I think because uh, it's like he's committing a suicide uh, when he's taking drugs. Uh, I think he can be compelled to uh, undergo treatment if he's found positive. Okay. Noted. Any other adverse uh, re uh, adverse uh, opinion on that matter? Sabi niya, pwede daw. Power of the, police power of the state to protect its citizenry. Sige lang. Uh, may discuss pa natin ang gusto yan. Meron pa? Yes, sir. Sir, two more items, sir, in the proposed bill. Uh, just my, minor lang naman, Mr. Chair. As um, you mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Chair, under Section 8, in the functions and duties and responsibilities of the Department of Health, it mentions here to regulate the license to prescribe dangerous drugs. Again, uh, Mr. Chair, as you pointed out, currently this is a uh, function being uh, performed by uh, PDEA, Mr. Chair. And then finally, Mr. Chair, under Section 9, uh, powers and functions of the proposed uh, Bureau uh, in the Department of Health. We just like to propose uh, an addition uh, to the functions, Mr. Chair, maybe, uh, number 7, Mr. Chair. Just a catch-all phrase, uh, Mr. Chair, to perform other duties relevant to the uh, relative mandates of the Department of Health provided for under the law. Anyway, Mr. Chair, we will be submitting a written uh, uh, proposal, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ayusi Chris. Salamat. So, any more? Parangers 513. Pidia, Pidia. Pidia. NBI. Yes, sir. Sir, ano lang? Uh, concern lang. So, we, we believe no, that uh, everybody deserves a second chance. I think this is the reason why. Uh, you're taking out the, <laughs> the imprisonment or the penalty for drug use. No? Uh, but if you take away, sir, the, no, the, the imprisonment of uh, drug use, no? it would encourage, sir, 
more drug uh, addicts. Uh, it will encourage because uh, they will say, oh, anyway, uh, all you have to do is undergo drug treatment. And more, more people will, uh, uh, those who have the tendency to use drugs, especially during parties, will be encouraged because there's no imprisonment. Uh, I think second chance, it's okay, but this should serve as a deterrent. Eh? You know, after you're given the second chance, and then you blew it, I think you don't deserve to be in the society because a drug dependent is something that's not only the society, but his family. Uh, he will steal, he will kill, uh, and he... Anyway, yung second chance naman na sinasabi natin dito, uh, pertaining to the government's approach on this uh, on this uh, problem is that being a reformative approach, di ba? Gusto natin magbagong buhay siya, restorative approach, rather than uh, purely punitive or uh, restitutive uh, approach. But yung sinasabi mo na he blew his second chance, eh, hindi na siya, recidivist na siya doon, di ba? Yung pangalawang, kasi sabi mo, takot ka na maabuso ito, pabalik-balik na lang, magsyabwa ko ngayon. In a way, rehab lang naman. Pag nahuli ako, nahuli siya. Nirehab. After nirehab, bumalik, nagsyabwa uli. Nahuli, positive, irrehab naman uli. That, that's recidivism na, di ba? So, dapat may provision ng batas natin na another uh, treatment for this uh, recidivist na mga tao. Dapat na uh, stiffer penalty for these people, hindi lang rehab. Do, do, you, do you agree with me? Kasi, sabi mo nga, pwede ito maabuso. Totoo yun. Maabuso ito nila. Pero kung uh, recidivist ka na, ah, hindi na ito, hindi ka na rehab namin, ikukulong ka na talaga namin. So pag-aralan natin yan, himayin natin ang gusto itong batas na ito. At least yung second chance na bigay mo sa kanya on the first offense. Di ba? Ayaw mo na si Kansas kay Sanchez. <laughs> That's beside the point. Please, ah, uh, 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 Mr. Chair, to have uh, no, a point of view coming from the medical sector, we have made a presentation, if I may be allowed to do so, a uh, PowerPoint presentation, Mr. Chair. Please, uh, go ahead. Okay, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we want to f give you our point of view with regards to Senate Bill Number 513, which, was which is introduced by Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, an act strengthening the drug abuse prevention, treatment, and rehabilitation, amending for the purpose Republic Act 9165, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002, as amended and appropriating funds, therefore. Okay, to give you an idea, po, no? um, I, uh, we in the health sector understand that uh, drug addiction has many facets. Pwede yung legal, sa judicial system natin meron yan, sa education and the future of our next generation is also there. But it also affects the communities, it also affects the families, and of course it affects the individual. We consider it as a chronic relapsing disorder. Alam naman natin na initiation ng drug use is generally a voluntary effort. Pero kapag dumating na sa punto na nagkaroon na ng pagbabago sa utak, ng tao dun sa, dahil sa paggamit niya ng droga, nawawalan po siya ng control. So once he starts losing control of his habit, nagiging relax, paulit-ulit, paulit-ulit. Kaya nagiging problema, hindi na nila makontrol ang sarili nila. So that is, what, that is our point of view from the health sector. Ngayon, ang national burden natin is approximately 4 million people. This is based on real numbers. Next slide, please. Uh, I-disaggregate natin sila into different levels, mild, moderate, severe. Ayon sa WHO, yung mga mild cases are more or less 94 to 95%. So, computing it from an estimated 4 million Filipinos who are using illicit drugs, that's around 3.6 million people. Pangalawa, mga moderate users, ito yung mga party, party users, regular users, more or less 160,000 ito. Hindi pa masyadong apektado, fully functional people. That's around 4 to 5%. And yung 1 to 2% na may severe, na dysfunctional na talaga, is around 40,000 uh, and computed to be around 40,000. Ano po bang significance nito? Depende po sa level ng severity ng drug use, 
dito po natin ibinabagay kung ano yung treatment plan natin para sa pasyente. So, next slide, please. Okay. Sa mild users, ito po ay sa community-based rehabilitation program natin ginagawa. Ito po ay usually run by uh, the, the local government units through guidance from the DILG and support coming from other agencies tulad ng DOH, DSWD, spiritual uh, spiritual agencies, uh, spiritual fun ano, and among many others including TESDA, DepEd, etc. Hindi po ito focus primarily on DOH alone kasi sa community-based rehabilitation program o itong 3.6 million po natin, hindi naman sila ganun katalamak pa. Hi nagsisimula pa lang, highly um, highly highly easy to change itong mga taong to. So dito po natin muna sila nilalagay sa community-based rehab program. Ngayon, para dun sa mga moderate severity, dun naman po natin nire-recommend sa outpatient program. It, this is estimated to be 160,000. So, functional. Pwede pang umuwi sa bahay, pwede pang magtrabaho, pwede pang mag-aral, pero kailangan na nila ng mas formal na tulong. And sadly, no, nung 2018, only 4,322 clients were admitted into an outpatient program. So, medyo kukonti pa lang ang outpatient programs kasi po natin, ano? at saka hindi pa masyadong kilala ng tao. Finally, yung mga talamak or yung severe are in inpatient or what we call residential rehabilitation programs to which around 4,800 clients ang nai-admit natin sa mga DOH facilities natin. Okay, there are reasons why hindi ganun kataas. One is the availability sa location, but more importantly, yung hirap sa pagpasok, marami po tayong tinuturn away or na nawawalan ng gana, nagvo-volunteer pumasok. Kaya lang because of the tedious process ng pagpasok nila, eh, nagbabago, nagdadalawang isip na at umaatras na. That's one of the reasons why hindi ganun kalaki. Pangalawa, dependent sa court order ang rehabilitation natin. Hindi kami nag a ng walang court order sa loob ng ating reha residential rehab centers. So, kung ano lang ang ipadala sa atin ng korte, yun lang ang tinatanggap po namin. So, limited po. Uh, we had surges during uh, open double barrel and we have long sandali ah uh, uh, doc yung nagpaparehab sa private uh, rehab centers kumukuha rin sila ng court order yes your honor required din po sila uh, required din yes your thank honor thank you so doon po ang isa sa mga dilemma ng ating mga ano ng ating mga voluntary na pumapasok nahirapan sila mag-secure ng court order But we actually need court orders, especially for some cases. So next slide, please. So this is the setup of the DOH now. The policies, research and development are in the central office under the Dangerous Drugs Abuse Prevention and Treatment Program. Program po lang po ito, no? Mostly manned by wala tong plantilla positions, and they are manned by people coming from different areas of DOH or JOs. As far as rehabilitation is concerned, hawak naman po ito ng ibang cluster. Magkahiwalay po sila. Ang cluster ng Field Implementation Coordination Team ang may hawak ng Drug Abuse Treatment and Rehab Centers natin. And ang licensing is under the Health Regulation Team. So Health Facilities and Services Regulatory Bureau ang may hawak ng license. If you notice po, parang medyo magkakahiwalay sila sa present setup namin ngayon. And next slide, please. Sa ngayon, meron po tayong labing walong rehabilitation centers. Total bed capacity, 6,500 beds. Per region, meron tayong isa o dalawa. Pero if you notice, region 4B, Mimaropa, wala pa po tayo. At saka Barm, wala pa rin po tayo. We are in the process na sana by next, by next year or two years from now, masimulan na natin ang pagpapatayo for these facilities. Ito ay DOH lang, ha? DOH lang ito, Hindi sir. Hindi nyo na-account yung mga LGU-supported uh, rehab centers. Wala Kasi po. Kasi sa Dabao, meron kami doon dalawa. Sa Dabao na malaki rin. LGU ang nag- uh, one, LGU ang nag- uh, uh, papan. Yes, Your Honor. Yeah. Maganda yung setup ng Dabao. Meron pa rin siyang outpatient din, eh. Oh, meron din, meron din. Meron din po. Unfortunately, hindi po natin ma-spread out sa lahat. Um, so, kung we will go by the standard na gusto natin ng ito ba lahat? Uh, residential? Uh, residential, sir. Ito lahat, itong yes. siyam. Labing siyam po. Siyam, puro rito residential. Yes, Your Honor. So if we go by, by our standard na kailangan one per region, 
Kulang na lang ito ng... Dalawa, sir. Hindi, oh. Sabintang regions tayo, di ba? Ay, tat... Ay, hindi naman ito. Covered meron natin. Meron tayong car. In CR, dalawa. Inpatient. One, two, three, four A, four, four B. Wala. Four B, your honor. At saka BARM. Ang car in your honor, hindi nakalagay dyan. Eleven, twelve. Ang so, car po, unprocessed na sila. Na under construction na po. Ah, meron? Yes, Your Honor. Cordillera Autonomous Region. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. Para makompleto po natin. Pero yung 4B tsaka barn po, medyo wala pa, sir. Dito na yun. Dito na Under construction ng Region 9. Uh Oo. -oh. Okay. Anyway, uh, so ito po yung labing walo. We only have 6,500. Kung ikukumpara natin sa needs natin, mukhang kukulangin pa siya. Okay, next slide please. Ito yung mapa natin. Um, halos buong Pilipinas naman per region covered na. If you, cut, you look at the far left, on the left middle side, yung kulay green, may maropa po natin, bakante pa, at saka dun sa lower portion po natin, yung kulay red, ang, ang ating barm, wala din siya. But more or less, all regions are covered na. Uh, we are targeting one per region, but it does not stop us from encouraging the LGUs to put up rehabilitation centers of their own. Especially the highly urbanized cities na alam nilang mas mataas ang needs nila. There are, like, like in Davao, Quezon City, among many others, na nagtayo sila ng sariling rehab. We encourage that actually. But as far as DOH is concerned, ang target po namin ay one per region. Next slide please. Sa rehabilitation centers na outpatient, meron po tayong apat lang. Sa apat na to, isa pa dito ang private. So yung tatlo, one is in Tarlac, one is uh, in um, Baguio, sa ating Cordillera Autonomous, at saka isa sa Region 11. Ngayon, last uh, year or two years ago, nagtayo po tayo ng tinatawag na recovery clinics. Ito po yung nasa right side ng screen natin. These are run by local government units upon, uh, with, with the support of the Department of Health. Outpatient recovery clinics po ito, outpatient rehabilitation centers. Pinapilot po natin ito, and eventually we will encourage na lumaki pa lalo ito, madagdagan pa. Next slide, please. So ano po ba ang goal namin? Uh, we are very much in support of uh, Senate Bill Number no. 513, and ang goal namin is to strengthen the country's public health approach in the prevention of treatment and rehabilitation in two ways. Excuse me, sir. Let's just wait for that chair. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, sir.
Sorry, please continue. Hindi ko daw pigilan eh. Takbo muna ako. Please continue. With your indulgence, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay, ang goal talaga na ang ano namin is to strengthen the country's public health approach in the prevention, treatment, and rehabilitation for dr of drug abuse. In two ways, ang recommendation po namin is amending specific provisions of RA 9165 under Senate Bill Number 513, and of course, uh, to institutionalize a bureau which shall help perform specific duties and responsibilities of the DOH. Next slide, please. So, ano yung una recommendation po namin? Improve access to treatment. Ito po, mahirap kasi eh. Kung dadaan pa palagi sa korte, nahihirapan yung mga volunteers. We do not intend na tanggalin ang ano, court orders, but we intend to add another venue, avenue, for them to have access to treatment. And treatment should be appropriate, effective, efficient, and ethical. Next slide, please. Next would be, uh, we recommend the creation of a bureau, probably a Bureau of Drug Abuse Prevention and Control under the Department of Health. What shall it do? It shall support the community-based drug rehab programs. Ang CBDRP po natin, ano, ay run by the LGUs, ADACs, ADAWs, etc. Kasi sila yung mas nakaalam kung ano yung meron sa community. And the treatment part is only as an, as an aspect of community-based drug rehabilitation program. Kasama po dyan ang social services social services natin, education, livelihood projects, among many others, and it should be considered into one, uh, combined into one. Another is to promote outpatient TRCs per province. Ideally po, these are run by the provinces or the local government units, at least outpatient. And then for the DOH to create one inpatient TRC per region, meron pa tayong kakulangan, but we will comply with that kakulangan. And meron po kaming nire-recommend. Some of our TRCs ay uh, i-improve namin to make them into Apex TRCs. Ano po ba itong Apex TRCs natin? These are TRCs na existing na, na-improve lang natin to handle special populations. Sino-sino po ba yon? Ito po yung mga women, ito po yung mga may problema with infectious diseases na hindi natin pwedeng ihalo ng basta-basta sa regular rehabilitation. Yung mga merong mentally ill na drug users natin na medyo kakaiba rin ng treatment na pangangailangan among many other types of health facilities. So, if we have a bureau, then perhaps we could help improve our system or continuum of care sa DOH po. Pero, Dok, yung sabi mo yung itong APIC uh, TRCs, APICs? Yes, Ito yun yung special cases na sabi mo? Yes, Your Honor. Yung mga nasimula ng masiraan ng bait? Meron. Yes po. Thank you, thank you. Kasama po yun doon. Mga medyo nagkakaproblema na sa pag-iisip. Uh, yung mga nag, meron mga HIV, AIDS, hepatitis, mataas po ang TB sa mga drug users natin kumpara sa general population. Hindi po natin sila pwedeng basta-basta ihalo lang eh. Magkakahawahan. Okay. So, uh, next slide please. Ah, meron pa pala. Konti na lang, sir. Yung mga promos amendments po namin. Next slide, please. Una is yung sa section 15 na madagdagan na pag-usapan na rin po natin to kanina. Ang ano namin is, since ang health sector po ay tingin namin chronic and relapsing, nagkaroon ng pagbabago sa pag-iisip, bigyan natin sila ng opportunity kahit magpabalik-balik sila for recommitment. Next slide, please. Section 45 po sa publication materials, isama po natin si DOH. Next slide, please. Section 47, no, sa mga drug-free workplace programs, na pag-usapan na rin po natin to kanina. Next slide, please. Uh, voluntary submission, section 54, na pwede po sanang dumiretsyo na lang sila sa TRC, na huwag na nila pagdaanan yung court orders and all that for voluntary cases. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, sa section 56 po, no, sa duration of discharge na ang doktor na mismo ang magdedetermine kung... Uh, Kailan siya pwedeng discharge, whether that be 3 months, 6 months, 12 months, depende po sa progreso ng pasyente. Next slide, please. Section 75 po, yung sinabi natin, 1 TRC per region, 1 non-TRC per, uh, per province, 5 apex TRCs. And uh, kung pwede po sana na ang DOJ ay magkaroon ng sariling TRC sa loob ng penitentiary, sa loob ng Bucor, kasi medyo hindi po talaga namin kaya yung humawak ng... Uh, preso. Medyo kakaiba po eh. Alam niyo naman kami mga doktor. Pag medyo ganyan ako, wala kami training dyan. Okay, next slide please. Sa section 76 po, na, ano, uh, kung pwedeng licensing ng uh, S2, mailipat sa DOH from PIDEA, 
para mas madali po yung access ng mga doktor sa S2 licenses. Ang S2 license po ay lisensya po ng doktor para mag-prescribe ng dangerous drugs. Halimbawa, morphine, uh, mga opioids po natin, nubane, etc. Diyan po sila, uh, medyo para lang ma-improve, ma-feel nila na health sector po ito. Hindi po namin inaagaw sa Tideya. Pero at least mai ano lang, mai align lang sa health sector. Okay, next slide please. And of course, uh, we are recommending a creation of a bureau on drug abuse prevention and control. Uh, okay. Next slide, please. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, may may we re uh, recognize the presence of uh, Senator Toldo Lintino. Thank you for coming. Although you're uh, late, but uh, thank you for coming. Ang hearing kayo doon? Salamat. So, yung last recommendation mo, kailangan pa natin mag-propose uh, naman ng bill na creation of uh, yung bureau. Yung sabi yung bureau, bureau of... Uh, Kung hindi kasama dito sa... Kasama na sir sa 513, sir. Sigurado ka? Itong 513, kasama ba yan? Kasama sa 513? Section 9, your honor. Sorry, sorry. Hindi ko pala inabot. Hindi ko inabot ang basa. Sorry. So, kasama pala yun. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, thank you. Any more comment para makalipat tayo? Dalawang bill na lang para matapos tayo. Please, NBI. Sir, concern lang. Dito sa proposed amendment, it says that the court order is required before the drug dependent is discharged. Is that accurate? For court court ordered cases, yeah, yeah. For court ordered cases, so when you pass it through court order, kailangan court order di maglabas upon recommendation ng doctor, but not for the court. We are we we want to sana ask na ang magdetermine kung kailan siya pwedeng ilabas is ang doctor na magsasabi hindi yun nakabase yun sa six months ba ito o one year ito based on the previous law. I think that's the program is all about. If you complete the program, mm -hmm. uh, why do you need a court order kung uh, lalabas na yung tao? Kasi uh, magkakaroon siya ng discretion on, on the part of the doctor. If inis ako sa'yo, I will not release you. No? So magkakaroon siya ng discretion on the part of the attending physician. So if you insist that, I think it's going to be subject to abuses. I understand, uh, Mr. Chair. Sir. May I respond? Mr. Chair, siguro ang apprehension ni Atty. is yung uh, baka bumalik uli yung mga passes for sale. Di ba? Uh, discretion of the doctor. But I think the law will provide for an oversight. And uh, medical reasons are uh, probably based on medical checkups, based on science. Di ba? So, siguro yung magkaroon lang ng overlay ng uh, another... Uh, and, and I'm sure the judge, uh, before uh, before any petition is heard concerning a release, would study the, the merits of the case, would summon the doctor, would ask for medical uh, documentation, etc. So, siguro kung yun yung apprehension mo, attorney, yung discretion, eh, ano na yun, uh, might be stretching it too far, because otherwise, lahat ito may discretion na. Bago i-refer do ng, ng doc na sa doktor, sa nurse muna. O kung inis din yung nurse, eh hindi, i-refer sa doktor. Di ba? Bago makarating sa doktor, may prepare mo pang isa. So, baka to, to, to really envision what the law uh, provides, siguro ibigyan muna natin ng, ng uh, uh, pag-ayuda yung presumption of regularity. Anyway, Hippocratic Oath, the oath of the judge. Lahat na yun, magkakasama na yan eh. Uh, yes, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Sir, Mr. Chair, kasi right now, after six months, he, he, the drug dependent will be released <coughs> without need of court order. No? Do you need the court order for the release? Okay. Uh, please, sir, uh, Mr. Chair, um, with your indulgence, yung voluntary na papasok, hindi na kailangan ng court order pala lumabas. Yung may court order na pumasok, kailangan ng court order lumabas. 
Now, hindi naman po aabusunin ng doktor yon, kasi well, in our treatment program, meron pong set ng professionals that handle the drug user, that include psychologist, social worker, at saka meron pong mga parameters tayo na inoobserbahan sa pasyente. So, mababawas po doon based on those parameters, those evaluations, may pagsasama-samahin yon. And then, the doctor will now have to make that decision based on all of that. Kung makikitaan ng bias yung doctor regarding a certain patient, yung kanyang ano, medyo nagiging unprofessional po yan. Makikita <coughs> ng iba nating mga kasama sa team, and they will bring that up to the doctor, or maybe even to a higher person of higher authority. So, so meron na check. Anyway, uh, no, <coughs> to be safe, kung gusto natin na uh, Safe tayo sa abuse of discretion by the doctor. Sabi natin, maglagay tayo ng penal provision dito. Ang doktor na mahuli na gumagawa ng kalukuhan, may, penal, may penalty, may, may, may corresponding imprisonment. Baka mamaya, madiskari sa doktor. Wala lang doktor gusto magpa-assign siya. Dahil mamaya, galit sa akin yung kwan, galit sa akin yung pasyente, it's a charge ako ng uh, abuse of discretion. Yes, sir. Baka madiskari sa doktor. Kasi nakuha ko rin yung punto ni MBI, yung sinabi nga niya kanina, halimbawa, magkapatid tayo, mayroon tayong paghatihan na property, ikaw, adi ka, recommend kita na mag-rehab. Tapos, habang pinaprocess ko yung pagbinta ng lupa natin, para blind ka, habang nasa loob ka, Sabi ako yung doktor na ito muna sa'yo, huwag mo nang i-release yan ha. Patagal-tagalin mo muna kasi ang korte naman is dependent on the recommendation of the doctor. Pag hindi pa nirecommend ng doktor na palabasin, ang korte din hindi mag-issue ng order. Di ba? So sabihan ng kapatid, ito muna sa'yo. Huwag mo muna palabasin yan para hintay ko mabili ng, uh, kan, mabili ng malaking kumpanya itong uh, main lupain. So, solo niya ngayon. Parang ngayon lang. Iba't ina yung isolated cases yan. So, we are, we are just, uh, sabi nga ni, uh, ni Senator Tolente, no? we are stretching too far. But still, it may happen. And it can happen. At ginagawa yan, alam ko, may mga pa pamilya na gumagawa niyan. Marami. May mga gumagawa niyan. So, sana hindi maabuso. So, yun lang. We have a... Uh, meron ba bang comment dito sa bill na ito? Uh, ASIC to meet him. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this is a reaction on the proposal for the transfer of the issuance of ESTO licenses to be issued by DOH. Because according to the law, 9165, it is PDEA who will monitor the, uh, the uh, issuance of licenses to medical practitioners who are authorized to administer dangerous drugs. So, baka maabuso po ito. So, again, okay. going back to discussion. <laughs> But anyway, sige sir, I will, will register your, uh, your position. Pag-usapan natin yan, ha? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor. Si Dr. Gusto, kanila na, DOH na, ikaw dapat retain sa PDA. Uh, we will take that up in the future uh, discussions. Anymore? Wala na. So, dalawa na lang. Dalawang bills na lang ito. Please uh, bear with me. Tapusin natin ito. <clears throat> Next is uh, Senate Bill number 658, Establishment of Bahay Malaya for Juvenile Rugby Users by Senator Ramon Bo Revilla Jr. Objective is the creation of Bahay Malaya in every province and city which shall serve as a rehabilitation center for juvenile rugby users. Penalty imposed on a child in healing rugby. First of all, The child offender shall be mandated to join an initial conference at Bahay Malaya with his parents. Kung may parents. Kung wala, uh, pabayaan ito. Second, second or more offense. The child offender shall be admitted to Bahay Malaya for rehabilitation. Penalty imposed on parents. Number one, juvenile rugby user counseling, or any other intervention as the DSWD civil servant deems necessary in advancing the best interest of the child. Number two, neglected juvenile rugby user, imprisonment of two weeks to not more than six months. Sa parents ito, ha? Magkukulong ang parents. 
pag uh, napabayaan yung anak niya. So, any comment on this uh, bit? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the board fully supports the uh, proposal, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, because right now we, we lack uh, specialized facilities, especially facilities for uh, minors, uh, Mr. Chair. But one minor uh, uh, recommendation amendment, Mr. Chair, on Section 4, should funded by the local government, operated by the Department of Health, in coordination with the SWD. Okay, noted. The SWD, please. Sir, although, uh, thank you, Your Honor, and uh, uh, although we have to still to submit our official position paper, I would like to share to you uh, the comments from the Standards Bureau and our legal services. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, maganda, sir, na ma-consider first yung sa Section 1, yung sa title niya, uh, whereby yung boys are not the only ones who use rugby there were a number of girls as well. So, especially those who live and stay in the streets you, uh, use rugby as well. So, yung title uh, should be replaced siya para... Meron pa. Meron pang men. Meron pang women. Apa. Oh, daming matanda dyan sa ilalim ng tulay. Oh, sige pa rin ganun. Mm -hmm. So, i-cover natin lahat yun. Apa. Tapos, Please. also, sir, yung sa section 3, yung sa definition po ng child, so, ginagamit po kasi natin yung definition of child as of PD 603, yung ating uh, Child and Welfare uh, Code. Yung ch uh, child refers to person below 18 uh, years of age or those over but are unable to take care of themselves from abuse, neglect, cruelty, exploitation, or discrimination because of a physical or mental disability or condition. So, hindi lang po basta 18 years old lang yung kinoconsider na child. Kung hindi po, kung lagpas ka na ng 18 pero hindi na po, hindi po nila kayang alagaan yung sarili nila due to physical and uh, uh, mental uh, disability or condition. Then, dun po sa section 4, napansin po namin, dalawa po yung section 4 dun sa bill. So, pag-isahin din po yun. And then also, uh, include the section of the following, yung organizational structure ng Bahay Malaya, yung legibility po ng mga staff na bubuo po nun, funding, and also the program and services. Uh, provided that the consent is not needed when, the, when a staff from the local social welfare and development office instead of the SWD. Since po yung direct service po natin po as of uh, Republic Act 7160, Binaba na po kasi yung direct service from DSWD to the, to the local government po, which is yung counterpart po namin is the local social welfare and development office. And then section 5 and section 6, instead of, DA, of DSWD, it should be the LSWDO, yung ating local social welfare and development office, as the program and services is devolved sa local government. Then... Yung sa legal service naman po namin, ang, ang recommendation niya po is convergence of efforts of all various agencies to address the issue of rehabilitation of juvenile drug users. So, yun lang po yung mako-comment namin po Mr. sa ngayon Mr. and Mr. our uh, official uh, paper. Yes, WD. Yes, po. Mali lang. I, I, siguro to uh, typo error tong ano eh, section 4, section 4, but we would like to get your opinion concerning the uh, establishment of private, private uh, Bahay Malaya. Mm -hmm. Even before the passage or even before this bill was crafted, we have Boys Town. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yep. And other establishments. So what would be the position of DSWD uh, insofar as the uh, establishments of existence of private Bahay Malayas? Baka hindi Bahay Malaya ang tawag ngayon doon. Mm -hmm. Baka magaganda pa yung uh, servisyong uh, ibinibigay noon sa Bahay Malaya po. So, Hindi, dito sa alaman nitong bill na ito, yung mga privado, mm. kasi kayo, gusto nyo lang mag-coordinate kayo sa local government unit, sa, DS, sa Department of Health, mm. eh meron mga pri private institutions run by the religious sector, run by uh, NGOs, which are functioning right now. So, usually naman po, uh, yung mga... In so far as this bill is concerned. Yes, sir. So, so far as the bill is concerned, sir, uh, meron naman po tayong regulatory function sa DSWD through the Standards Bureau whereby 
yung mga NGOs na nagki-cater ng mga ganyang services po ay dumadaan po sa ano. Apo. So hindi kayo nagpo-propose each province and city shall have a rehabilitation center for juvenile rugby users whether operated by the government or the private sector. So so far Hindi dapat ang proposal. Mm. Hindi lang yung sa sarili ninyong uh, kahon. Uh, pag merong exist existing na, hindi yun na yun. Each, each province shall have a rehabilitation center. So pwede nating expand yung definition ng rehabilitation center whether private or government owned. Siguro so, sir, we will take note of that po. Then we will submit also submit the position on the paper. Up. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much po sir. Thank you, Sir Tantino. <coughs> DOH, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you ulit po. We have reservations with regards to this bill among children with rugby users. Generally po kasi, ang mga children na nagra-rugby use are either victims of neglect or abuse or even exploitation. Hindi drug abuse ang primary problem, but drug abuse is one of the symptoms of all those. So, ideally po, hindi sila dapat ipasok sa isang institution. Ideally, we recommend that they be kept within the family, continue to undergo schooling, continue with a normal life that a child should have, hindi po siya nakapasok. In special circumstances, siguro po na drug user siya, mas maganda na naskalub siya sa isang shelter, not necessarily a rehabilitation center. And then magkaroon lang siya ng part of his program, part, but not the whole program, is to be able to undergo treatment and rehabilitation kung kinakailangan po iyan. So the, ma, our recommendation for this is kasama ang DOH na tutulong sa isang facility but not necessarily run that facility because we believe that there is a larger need of the child for treatment not on the drugs itself but as a whole po. Thank you, so, Mr. Gusto mong ipasa sa DSWD. Hindi na DOH problem yan. DSWD problem. <laughs> Yes, Your Honor. I, I, I get your point. <clears throat> I get your point. Dahil uh, karamihan mo talaga sa mga bata na ito, yung gusto mo, ibalik sa parents. Pero kaya nga andyan yan sa kalsada dahil wala, can, cannot be located ang mga parents. Cannot be located talaga. Kahit saan mo hanapin, wala na malukit. Kaya tama yung suggestion mo na uh, ano shelter, uh, shelter area, shelter house, or what. So, Okay na sa inyo, this WD, pasa sa inyo ito. As of, ano po kasi, uh, syempre, as of following po tayo sa 7160, yung devolution ng direct services, which is sa local government po ang, ano, which is, meron naman po kaming counterpart naman sa local government. Ko lang, for, for, for nationwide uh, coverage, purposes, eh, pinapasa sa inyo, pero, Implementation is local yes. level, localized Ganun implementation. Meron mo kayong oversight din siguro na supervision dito sa local, wala na. Ano po, Complete uh, touch? more on ano po kasi ang DSWD, ang pinaprovide ng DSWD is TARA or yung technical assistance and resource augmentation. Kasi po, ang, as of 7160 po, ang overhead na supervision po ng ating LSWDO or the local chief executives. So. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Thank you for that. Any more comment, uh, Pidia, sir? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this is only an additional information. Uh, on children involved on illegal drug activities, hindi na lang ito yung mga batang langtangan. Some of these children are already being utilized by the syndicates, and some, the parents themselves, are using them also on illegal drug activities. To cite you a data uh, based on record of PDEA, from July 1, 2016 to August 31 of 2019, we have in record a total of 2,569 minors rescued. And they are users, pushers, possessors, some are cultivators, some are visiting drug dens, some are drug den employees, and some are drug den maintainers. And the youngest on record is four years old to 17 years old range. 
of this 2,569. And then, sir, mayroon naman, uh, <coughs> mayroon pagkakaiba itong uh, juvenile rugby users compared dun sa mga, mga juvenile na ginamit as drug mule, career, career ng, uh, ng sindikato. Dahil kung ako naman ang drug pusher, hindi ko pagkatiwala itong aking aking droga doon sa step children na uh, yung user uh, yeah, na nagra-rugby. Wala sa hulog yan. Sabihin ko, ipadeliver ko sa Manila, baka sa Makati, ihatid yung droga ko na yan. Pero experience ko naman, <clears throat> ang nagagamit talaga ng mga bata, ng mga sindikato as courier, ito yung mga bata na nahook doon sa mga internet yun ang nilalapitan nila yung mga bata na mahilig maglaro sa internet pero hindi gumagamit ng, uh, ng solvent, ha? Pagkita nila, wala ng pera yung bata na nahuhok na sa internet. Nilalapitan ito ng mga puser. O, oh, gusto mo ng pera? Opo, kuya. Sige. May papatay ko sa'yo doon na cake o oh, whatever, flowers. Hatid mo doon. O, oh, sige. Bigyan kita 1,000. So, 1,000. Napakalaki yan sa isang bata. Ilang oras na yan na maglalaro sa internet. Kaya, kukunin niya, ihatid. Pero, ako ko lang, kung meron ako na encounter na isang rugby boy na inutusan na puser na ihatid mo itong ginawang courier dahil baka mamaya mawala yung mawala yung uh, shabu mo dyan. Ako ko ah. But anyway, pwede rin ito magamit. Lalo kung maganda pag-iisip, pwede magamit. So, uh, considering your uh, comment, sir. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. And in support to this uh, law, sir, the uh, PDEA have projects sa gift batang solvent. It is already uh, functional. Ang purpose po nito is to reform street children to become productive members of society and provide rehabilitative, reformative, and reintegrative facility for rescued batang solvent. Meron na po tayong established na facility and we have 62 children uh, in this facility, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The more na hindi na talaga ma-dissolve ang PDA nito. <laughs> marami, marami kayo ang ongoing go, on program eh. Di ba? Huwag kang mabigat na masyado kung resolve, ay dissolve ang PDA nito. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, noted, sir. Noted, noted. <clears throat> Any more comment? Yes, sir. In the end. Yes, sir. Sir, ano lang din sa penalty? I think the penalty is too light. No? Two weeks to six months. I, I think we should... Uh, sa parents ito, ha? Sa parents? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Chair. I think we should uh, put a more stringent uh, penalty for this. Because as we said, no, the, the children is the hope of our nation. So if they're just destroying our children, I think that's what the President said, no? cannot destroy Tama ka. I agree with you. On, on one, uh, yes. How, how will that uh, be reconciled with the uh, position given by Mr. Matipo na the best interest of the child is always to be with the parents? Kasi pag hinabaan mo yung sentensya sa parents, eh lalo naman nahiwalay sa, sa mga bata. Yung mga bata naging palaboy-laboy na naman. Ngayon siguro, ang, ang, ang rasyonali nito, igsiaan mo yung parusa sa mga parents para mapabalik na, mabuhuli yung kanilang pagsasama-sama bilang pamilya. Di po ba? So, how, how do you reconcile that? Yung definition ng uh, best interest of the child, kailangan ba nakahiwalay sa parents? Nakakulog yung parents, di ba? Ito, ang sinasabi ni attorney, habaan pa yung, yung, yung sentensya. E di lalong walang magulang yung bata. So how did, how do you reconcile that, uh, Mr. Uh, Matipo of uh, DSWD? Sir, bale, uh, as a social worker, uh, syempre, it, ano, it comes with a case-to-case uh, -case basis. Kasi titignan po talaga natin, syempre, ang pinaka-best, ang pinaka-ideal po talaga, yung magulang ay kasama ang kanyang mga anak. However, syempre, due to different circumstances, uh, pwede nating tignan po siya sa aspeto din na hindi lang basta yung parents din. Siyempre, yung mga immediate families na nakapaligid sa kanya. For example, kung kagaya ng sinabi ni Senator Bato kanina na wala na siyang magulang, 
baka meron pa siyang lolo lola, tito tita. So doon po natin titignan po sa struktura din po ng pamilya din po muna. Siyempre, ang pinaka worst case scenario po ay mailagay ang bata sa institusyon eh. Pero siyempre, uh, yung best interest of the child is una muna yung sa pamilya. Pero kagaya ng sinabi ko po sa inyo, case to case basis depende po kung ano po yung sitwasyon na kinalalagyan ng bata. Kaya kaya na nangyari ito dahil sa kapabayaan ng parents. Ito mga parents na ito talaga, anak lang ng anak, pasarap ng pasarap, pero pagpahirap na, iniiwan yung mga bata. Ang gobyerno ngayon ang problema. Kaya, agree din ako sa sabi ni Atty. Galicia sa NBI na it's never penalty ito. Dahil nagpabaya talaga itong mga parents na ito. On the other hand naman, kung ikaw naman ang kaharap ko, mahawa rin ako sa bata dahil walang parents. Nagkakulong ang mahabas kulungan. Ang hirap ng buhay ng gobyerno, no? So, talaga magkakaroon po talaga ng dilemma po talaga. Diliwa. Pero doon nga po talaga babagsak yung sa case-to-case -case basis na tinitignan natin depende doon sa sitwasyon. Example, pag yung magulang talaga ay nakulong because sa kapababayaan nila doon sa bata, siguro i-check din siguro po ng social welfare and development officer sa LGU kung may mga kamag-anak pa siya na pwede mo na mag-alaga sa bata for the meanwhile. Tama ka. But anyway, ito ni Galicia, huwag ka mag-alala. Nakita ko naman itong six months. Pagbigyan lang ito ng leksyon sa parents. Sabihin naman ng parents, Sir, ikukulong mo ako. Hindi ko na nga makontrol yung anak ko. Ikukulong mo pa ako. Kastigas ang ulo ng mga anak ko na yan. Marami akong parents na kinupronta dito. Ha? Sabi ng parents, Sir, bahala na kayo kung anong gusto nyo gawin sa anak ko na yan. Kung ilabay, itapon nyo sa dagat, itapon nyo yan. Basta ayaw ko na. Ang tigas ang ulo itong bata na ito. So, kawawa rin ang parents. Ikukulong natin. Kada ko siya sabi, kasalanan ni Juan, hindi kasalanan ni Pedro. Pero, may rin siya ang responsibilidad being a parent. Pero, in-exhaust in na niya lahat ng kanyang power over that child. Pero, matigas talaga ang ulo. Sabi siya, anong gawin ko? Sakit na nga yung kalooban ko dahil magkaanak ako na matigas ang ulo. Ikukulong mo pa ako. Dahil uh, ayaw mo yung bata niya sa akin. So, tama na siguro ito. Tingnan natin ito six months. Tingnan natin kung hindi magbago ito. <laughs> Bahala ba niya, kung wala mong penalty, di ba? Magpapaya talaga yung case to case. Tama yung kay Mr. Matipo na case to case business. Ah, si si, 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 si Sir Tondino ko na. Ayan, go ahead. Sir, to reconcile po, sir, uh, uh, we would like to suggest that uh, if uh, the child is abandoned, uh, it may happen that uh, the parent is also liable for violation of RA 7160. So he should, he or she should be prosecuted for 7160, which has a higher penalty in case the child was abandoned. So that is to reconcile the law. Pag pinabayaan talaga siya ng magulang, itinapos siya ng magulang, then let us prosecute uh, the parent for 7160, which is 12 years. If uh, by, 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 by because of poverty, Uh, talagang sa dami ng inanak niya, hindi niya talaga makontrol o talagang kapos yung time niya habang siya naghahanap buhay, then uh, the penalty, the impossible penalty prescribed by the bill is sufficient considering that uh, allowed siyang mag-probation dito. Kasama pa rin siya nung uh, anak niya paglabas mula sa rehabilitation center. So, ibig mo sabihin, magiging redundant na itong provision na ito sa existing laws natin na yung juvenile delinquency act sa child abuse sa so child abuse po sir child abuse ah kung na sir in case of abandonment lang po abandonment ah uh, the law, law enforcement agency or the local social welfare office shall have the option ah uh, pwede naman siya magkasame ah uh, pwede naman siya by by revise penal code or maraming batas na nagpapani siya kanya so the the prosecutor or the local social welfare office has the option kung ano i-file niya, whichever has the higher penalty in case of abandonment, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Noted. Senator Tolentino. Any more? Para dito? Isa na lang. Tis-tis lang tayo. Isa na lang. So, kung wala na, let's uh, take up the last bill. Senate Bill se number 749. Establishment of Rehabilitation Centers in each province and highly urbanized city. By Senator Grace Poe, objective, establishment of at least one DOH-administered drug rehabilitation center in its province 
and highly urbanized city. Benefit package for rehabilitation and detoxification. <clears throat> the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation shall design benefit packages for rehabilitation, treatment, and detoxification of drug dependence, which shall include one room and bed, two services of health card professionals, three prescription of drugs. Any comment? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as far as that aspect of uh, one rehabilitation center per province, nasagot na po natin yan kanina, Mr. Chair. Now, uh, dun sa health care coverage po uh, ng PhilHealth, we already have an existing coverage for detoxification that's worth 10,000 one time po. But as far as the rehabilitation program is concerned, hindi po covered yan ng PhilHealth. Ang recommendation po, I believe, no, um, this is anecdotal, ano po, uh, this is anecdotal na, ang ano, should ideally be either provided by the DOH through funding sa rehabilitation centers or support coming from local government units para sa constituents nila. So, perhaps I put some reservations on that aspect, sir, and it's best uh, answered by the PhilHealth. Thank you. Thank you. PhilHealth dito, no? Anyway, next uh, hearing, ibitahin natin. PhilHealth sa kayong WCD na PNP. WCPD na ba tawag yan? Women and Children Protection Desk. Mm -hmm. Next uh, hearing, sama natin yung WCPD. Any more? Yeah, yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, relative to my previous question kanina kay Mr. Matiko, I'm glad that the proposed bill in Section 75A uh, recognizes the importance of private rehabilitation centers. Ito yung nawawala kanina eh. Kasi nakalagay dito, drug rehabilitation centers, whether private or public, shall have the following functions. So, in effect, uh, it, it supports my previous contention in the previous bill that we should involve the private sector. Experience ko yan, mayor ako sa Tagaytay. We had the first drug rehabilitation center in Tagaytay City and BITRC. Hanggang ngayon, buhay yun. After that, napuno na yun, Ang nangyari, naglagay na ng mga private uh, rehabilitation center sa Amadeo, Cavite, sa Alfonso, Cavite, another one in Tagaytay, mapunta na ng uh, General Trias, etc., etc. So, hindi talaga kaya pag government institution lang. So, we have to, we have to involve the private sector. What, what is missing in this bill, Mr. Chair, is the oversight function of uh, what, whatever agency will uh, will 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 have control over this so uh, siguro ganitong kaaga pa lang matanong kanina inaayawan nung inaayawan nung isa DOH pinasa sa the, uh, DSWD pinasa sa local government dito po sa bill na ito uh, payag bang i-supervise ito ng uh, DOH uh, we will provide technical assistance and training John iba yung technical assistance eh technical assistance one week technical assistance Supervision, daily. Yes po, I, I guess uh, monitor. Huwag naman daily, Your Honor. Pero, <laughs> pero we, we will, ang, ano kasi, Your if Honor. It's a, if it's private sector uh, initiated, led, we will come to reach a point na we will have to regulate the amount of fees that will have to be paid. Mahal do sa private. Nung mayor ako, marami mga nagre-request, sir, ang mahal naman nung, ano, papasok ko yung kamag-anak namin, ang mahal nung singil uh, per month. So, it will have to, we will have to reach a point wherein a government body will have to regulate the fees. May ini standard na dapat tayo. And is the DOH willing to absorb that function? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor, the DOH has the Health Facilities Regulation Bureau, HFSRB regulation. Health, it, it monitors the, it accredits and also monitors po yung mga rehabilitation facilities natin, including yung mga hospitals. And likewise naman din po, yung Dangerous Drugs Abuse Prevention and Treatment Program na we're proposing na maging bureau sana. John, pero the fees, uh, pag, uh, one patient, first timer, uh, good for six months, uh, 10,000 naman. I don't know, sir, if uh, kaya natin na yung mandate tayo. yan, sir. Uh, Ganun na dapat tayo. Then, oh, we, yes, will ha, we will soon have, uh, we, sh we should soon have regulations na bawal yung hindi tanggapin dahil walang down payment. O baka naman hindi pa kainin dahil walang bayad yung, yung pag-ulang. 
hindi na pinakain, konti na lang yung pinakain doon sa bata. So, payag ba kayo to absorb that uh, functions in, in so far as regulations is concerned na detalyado tayo ron? We can, uh, we can, that can be part of our regulatory functions, uh, Mr. Uh, Ye yes, uh, because uh, you, you, we will be creating the Bureau of, uh, ano yung Bureau na bagong gagawin natin? Yes, Your Honor. Pwede natin ilagay yan doon. Diba? Yes, Your Honor. Bureau of Rehabilitation, di ba? Sige, uh, any more? Yep. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, again, uh, we, we support the proposal, Mr. Chair, except for uh, one apprehension, Mr. Chair. Just to reiterate what was already discussed earlier, under Section 3, again, it specifies that the director will be, the director and deputy director will be a physician, Mr. Chair. Again, <laughs> uh, it runs counter, the, uh, counter to the board regulation uh, issued, uh, Mr. Chair, by the board, no? We, we feel that any behavioral management professional can be a director and also a de deputy director. Pero kung merong isang physician, at the same time magaling siya dito sa field na ito, hindi kayo mag-object, di ba? Pwede naman, sir. Basta Open mag lang. Huwag lang ilimit sa ilimit. physician. Yes, sir. Huwag lang ilimit sa physician. Okay. Noted. Any more comment? <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, again, yes. we agree to disagree, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I don't know. We agree to disagree. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, yes. uh, I understand the Department of Health, you have a, a rating standard for hospitals. A three-star hospital, para hotel. Uh, yes, sir, you have a, a hospital with a dialysis machine. Uh, beyond tertiary, uh, meron pa mataas na grading system. And I suppose this once once in place, once in place, the rehabilitation centers will also have their own rankings. There is star, sure. five star, tertiary, community based, secondary, etc. Ganun ba? Yes, Your Honor. So you, you, you would want to have that place here as part you, of the regulatory functions? Meron sir tayo na, na ano eh. Uh, well, we have the different types of uh, facilities such as community based. We have programs, outpatient programs, at saka yung uh, rehabilitation centers. So, for rehabilitation, rehabilitation centers, centers yung, ra yung ranking, yung, uh, I'm sure yung mga ibang, yung mga ibang tao gusto nila dun sa mas mataas yung ranking, di ba? So, okay. mas mataas din yung standards na ipatutupad ninyo, imomonitor ninyo, rather than dun sa mga outpatient, outpatient lang. Ganun ba po yung gusto nyo? Uh, that would be ideal, uh, Mr. Uh, Your Honor, uh, na may ranking siya. Ang existing ranking po natin is actually based on capacity but not on the technical capabilities ng TRCs. We have, uh, we're in the process right now of putting up a, what we call an apex TRC that can handle specialized units. Ito yung mga merong may TB na kaso, drug user na medyo mentally ill na, uh, yung mga special functions, which we've limited only, well, we're targeting only uh, five areas, northern, so southern. So when, when will you have that uh, standards out? Well, via circular or what? Kailan nyo balak? We, want, we, we are in the process of, it's in the ano, drawing boards na... Kasi kung mahihahabol nyo yun, you can submit that to this committee para maidagdag yun dito. Na in, ma fine tune siguro ng committee. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Salamat. Maraming salamat din, sir. Any more comment? Wala na. So, to wrap up, uh, so far we have covered itong... Uh, Itong bills uh, regarding PDEA and uh, itong rehabilitation uh, bills, uh, I would like to, on behalf of the committee, I would like to thank everyone for your very uh, uh, active uh, participation in this uh, undertaking. Sana makakam up tayo ng magandang legislation out of this. Alam naman natin na uh, Lahat tayo gustong gaganda yung drug situation ng ating bansa. And it's about time na instead of disconnects, we have to connect and connect para uh, maayos natin ang problema. Uh, nakayo ko yung pideya, oh, naisip pa rin niya talaga na baka i-dissolve sila. <laughs> anyway, sir, we'll take in lahat ng puntos ninyo. Hindi naman tayo kung dito. Uh, I'm sure yung ating uh, Senate President na nag-author nito is uh, receptive din sa mga comments mga magagaling sa inyo. 
particularly pag-submit ko ng committee report in this, pamabasa niya lahat yung ating mga pinag-usapan dito. So, thank you everyone for your very active uh, participation. Sana <clears throat> next hearing, andito rin kayo, plus yung ating additional uh, resource persons. And uh, for the meantime, the hearing is uh, held by suspended. Thank you, everyone.